1966, LBJ was in the White House. That's the last time there was an unsold seat for a Washington Redskins home game. 134 straight, and they're full up once again today as the Giants take on the Redskins. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Lieber. Two big surprises here. The Giants at 2-0. That represents two-thirds of their win total all of last season. And the defending NFC champion Redskins are 0-2. And, of course, they're out for their third straight Super Bowl appearance, a record for an NFC team. With me is Dick Vermeil. Let's examine those records. First of all, the Giants. Why their fast start? Frank, their fast start. They're playing defense like they've always played. They've always been a good defensive team, but now they're scoring points. The young receivers, the fine offensive line is maturing much quicker than expected. Sims is healthy. They're excited about their offense. Redskins only lost two games all of last regular season. What's wrong with the Redskins? Well, everyone's giving Joe Gibbs a reason right now for losing. Even his dad has called him for Kremlin's sake. Really, they're not playing well. That's how easy it is to sum it up. They're not playing well. Maybe they have taken winning for granted, and they've forgotten how they got where they are. Third week of the regular season. Too early to call it a, a critical game? Critical game for the Redskins, believe it or not. Very critical, because if you go down 0-3, your chances of getting into the playoffs and then on into the Super Bowl are really slim. How about the Giants? I think if they could win today, they could get so excited that they could go on and become the playoff team that they would love to be. New enthusiasm, confidence, become a winner. We're ready now for the opening kickoff. The Giants have won the toss of the coin, and Jeff Hayes will be kicking off. When we got here on Friday, it was very warm and humid, but it's turned delightfully cool. McConkey, Phil McConkey on the right of your screen. A rookie from the Naval Academy and quite a story. And uh, on his left, you saw number 31, Frank Cephas, another rookie from UCLA. Hayes, who also is the Redskins punter, gets the whistle. Here we go. Healthy boot. McConkey at the goal line. Out to the 5. 10, 15, and across the 20-yard line. Giants will put it in play, first and 10 from that point, and here's how they'll line up. Joe Morris filling in for Butch Wolfolk, who has a rib injury, but may see some action. And, of course, Bobby Johnson, one of those great young wide receivers that the Giants have shown us so far this year. Very young offensive line, and it's, uh, this has been the big difference, including William Roberts, one of their number one draft picks. And Phil Sims, of course, the leading passer in the entire National Football League after just two weekends of play. Go with a single back setup. That's Carpenter. Sims comes out throwing and completes it. Vernon Dean, who is getting the start for the Giants, makes the hit that time on number 88. Bobby Johnson. Pick up to the 28-yard line. That'll be a pickup of seven. Looks like a second and three as you look at the Redskins' defensive line. This is the way they shape up. That's an all-veteran crew, but Charles Mann, the youngest player, just in his second year, replacing Todd Liebenstein. Also a veteran linebacking crew anchored by Neil Olkowitz and the new starter in the secondary, which has been under fire, is Vernon Dean, who has replaced Anthony Washington, who was shelled pretty good on Monday night against San Francisco. Carpenter over the right side to the 30-yard line will be very close to the first down. Carpenter came into this uh, ball game hurting a little bit with a hamstring pull. Well, I was on the practice field in New York on Thursday, Frank, and he didn't practice because all of a sudden a muscle tightened up in the hamstring area and he couldn't run at all. So there was some question whether or not uh, he was going to see action. He was actually on crutches earlier in the week. Third down, less than a yard needed for the first down as the Giants break the huddle at their 30-yard line. Are they for real? We may find out today. On third and less than one, they go with Carpenter, and I don't believe he made it. Or they jammed up that middle. So Phil Sims and the offensive unit head off the field, and the crowd is really getting into this ball game early as they give the defense a standing ovation. <laughs> You'd think it's at the fourth quarter with a minute to go. They haven't had much to cheer about so far this year. Dave Bust just stacked it up inside along with the help of Daryl Grant, and they couldn't make an inch. Jennings the punter, and Mike Nelms, number 21, is deep for the Redskins. <laughs> Jennings Long, one of the top punters in the National Football League. Elder Statesman of the Giants. Good kick. Nelms will field it at the 27, 30, 35, and that's about it. Good coverage on the part of the special the units of the New York Giants. So the Redskins will put it in play offensively and we'll set the offense for you. This is the way the Redskins will line up. 
Virgil C., one newcomer today to the offensive starting lineup because of the injury to Charlie Brown, who has a muscle pull. The veteran Hogs, the offensive line, veteran offensive line, certainly, of the Redskins. Took them to the Super Bowl two straight years. And Joe Theismann running the show. Two touchdowns, two interceptions for Joe in the first two ball games this year. Rick Walker, the tight end in motion, and Theismann will come out throwing. Over the middle, Art Monk. First down at the 48-yard line of the Giants. Monk, who had the great night against the 49ers with 10 catches for 200 yards, picks it up again. Williams on the tackle. You can see Joe's going to drop, drop straight back. A little play action there. Now watch him wing to the left there, hitting the seam. See it right in the seam right there? The receiver, Art Monk, number 81, actually slanted in too far, allowing Terry Kennard maybe to deck him a little bit earlier than it would have happened if he had gone a little bit too more to his left. 18-yard pickup on the play of first down. Redskins at the giant 48-yard line. Again, Theismann throwing. Intended for Monk and maybe too hot to handle. Defensively for the New York Giants, Jim Burt, the nose tackle. They play the three-man front. Curtis McGriff is the run specialist. They bring in Martin, George Martin, to pass rush. The Giants linebacking crew and the man everybody eyes on, of course, Lawrence Taylor after the great outing he had against the Cowboys last week. And the secondary, Mark Haynes, former number one pick, as is Terry Kennard and Kenny Hill, a new acquisition from the Raiders just a couple of weeks ago. There's Lawrence Taylor. Second and ten, Redskins at the Giant, 48. Walker again in motion. They go to Riggins for the first time, and Riggins finds some running room over the right side and pulls his way down to the 40-yard line. A pickup of eight on the play. It'll be second and two. Taylor showing great pursuit here, Dick. This guy can make plays all over the field. This time, see him there at the linebacker spot, number 56. He's just moving back inside, moving back inside, just hunting that ball carrier. There he is. He's actually hoping that the ball carrier doesn't get that far downfield in making that kind of a defensive play, Frank. If he does, they know he's giving away too many yards inside. Third down, three. Look at the numbers on Taylor last week against the Cowboys. Third and a short three for the Redskins at the giant 40. The fake to Joe Washington. Feisman in trouble. He'll run for the first. Goes down at the 36. He's got the first down by about a yard. Andy Hedden, number 54, the left side linebacker. Came up to make the stop, but the Redskins have another first down, first and 10 at the 36-yard line. You're talking about Lawrence Taylor. How do you block Lawrence Taylor? Well, you do it many ways. Actually, the one-back attack lends itself to blocking him nicely because you can put a big tight end over in there. Then you can put the up back that's the place of that second running back in the backfield on him because he's about 240. Then you can turn your offensive tackle out on him too, which doesn't always work. First and 10, Redskins at the New York 36. Again, Walker in motion. He's the move tight end as Riggins gets the call and takes it to the 34. Riggins had only 10 carries against San Francisco the other night. That's uh, like having the night off for him, isn't it? It is. That's not a very big day's work. Plus, the bombs have been taking them out of the game plan. You know, they like to give the ball to Riggins 25 times or so, and it, if those long touchdown passes are occurring against them, then they have to change their offensive approach. Plus, like Joe said, it's demoralizing. Opening possession of the game for the Redskins. They took the kickoff. I should say the Giants took the kickoff, and this is the Redskins' first possession of the game after the Giants were forced to punt. Second down, seven from the 34. Riggins to about the 30. Harry Carson, number 53, stacking up that play for the New York Giants. Riggins moving in on some pretty impressive figures uh, record-wise for the, uh, well, the he, record, he, Redskins. He, he came into the game only needing 21 carries to surpass Larry Brown's record of carrying the ball as a Redskin 1,530 times. That's a lot of bumps and bruises. And, of course, very close to that 10,000-yard career rushing mark. And very few players in the history of the National Football League have achieved that goal. Bill Parcells, the head coach of the Giants, looking on. Third down, long three, needed for the first down at the 30-yard line. Theismann picks out Monk over the middle. First down at the 20. Terry Kennard. Number 43 in the stop. Joe's just going to drop straight back. He has a nickel coverage in there. They're bump and run on Art Monk. He beat 
number 43, Perry Williams, to the inside on that. And then the, the other safety had to come over and help him out on that play. First down. Monk actually was knocked to the ground and got up to make that reception. Nose of the football just inside the Giants' 20-yard line. Theismann looking over the defensive alignment. Monk that time in motion now sets himself in the slot off to the left. Walker going in the other direction. Blitz is on. Theismann for Monk. Couldn't quite reach it as Theismann read the blitz and unloaded the ball quickly. Intended for Art Monk. Now watch everybody. There's Lawrence Taylor, number 56. You saw the big offensive tackle, Joe Jacoby, turn out and pick him up. Now he's going for the steal only, Frank. Fingertips off a touchdown. It'll be second and ten. The Redskins have had all kinds of problems of pass defense the first couple of games. I think they may have found their pass defense, and that is hang on to the football. Stay on the field. That's their philosophy. They like to gamble on defense. They like to challenge you and, and, and take away their short passes and every once in a while give up the big play. But it's been backfiring lately. Washington looking for its first first quarter touchdown this year. Joe Washington inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line. Harry Carson again making the stop, the veteran linebacker for the Giants, number 53. That's the little counterplay, Frank, that the Redskins have made so uh, famous within this one-back attack where the running back just steps to one side, allowing the offside guard and tackle to pull, and then he goes back over there and runs to the right in this case, and this kind of runner can run that kind of stuff. That little Joe Washington finds those points. Third down, Redskins need four for the first down at the Giants 14. Alvin Garrett is coming to the lineup. As a third wide receiver, Monk at the 10. Shoved out of bounds by Haynes. But the Redskins are rolling. They'll have a first and goal to go just inside the 10-yard line. John Riggins coming back into the lineup. As you were at the Redskins practice, too, they worked awful hard, didn't they? They really had a fine practice Friday. I was there, and they were in full pads, and they really got after it, and you could see that they were working and preparing to try to win again. First and goal to go. C is wide to the right side. Monk in the slot off to the right. Riggins. Five, two, one. Vintage John Riggins. You're going to see a big offensive lineman. See him pop up there in the middle of the screen. He's leading through on the linebacker. Did a nice job of blocking. And in comes Riggins in the power. Now the defensive guys are trying to swarm and put him down. You have to swarm tackle that guy. One man very seldom will bring him down. John Riggins in his 13th year in the National Football League. Eight of them with the Washington Redskins. That's what he's done so far this year. Second and goal from the one. Riggins. Did not get in. Good job by the middle of the defensive line. Looked like Taylor was right in the middle of that. Number 56 wreaking havoc. As per usual. The OI formation. Get the ball deep to him. And there he is now. Get up over the top. But you can see Taylor met him through a crack on the backside and didn't allow him to extend himself over the goal line. No touchdown. It is third and goal from the one. in motion, number 39. Again, they go with Riggins. He's over. Touchdown. Some of the Giants arguing. They felt he didn't get in there. He got in there. He reached the ball over and broke the plane of the goal line. I saw that from this angle now. Uh, I'm sure the official had the better angle to call it. So the Redskins score their first first quarter touchdown of the year on their first possession of the day. Mark Mosley tacks on the extra point. 
And it's 7-0 Washington. Now you can see the man in motion, Otis Wanley, number 39, is going to kick out block right there. He gets a kick out block. Now Riggins turns up inside. Now watch him reach. There he is. There's the ball. Touchdown. Seven Dip. minutes, 14 seconds left to play in the opening period. Redskins seven. Giants nothing. An impressive ball control drive by the Washington Redskins on their first possession of the day. And we welcome those of you who have been watching the Atlanta-Minnesota game. That's our first touchdown of the day. The Redskins lead it 7-0. Phil McConkey fielding the kickoff by Hayes and takes it back to just short of the 20-yard line. Outstanding job on coverage by Greg Williams, number 47 of the Redskins, who made the big hit. Oh, Greg Williams got 136 total first hits on special teams in 1983, and he was third. That shows you what kind of tempo they were playing with last year and appear to be playing with today. That's a Redskins specialty, of course, outstanding specialty teams. They spotted at the 21-yard line, first and 10, as Sims brings him out of the huddle. Phil has completed his only pass of the day for seven yards. Giants have had the ball just three plays here in the opening period. Sims to throw, and again, getting Bobby Johnson, who he hit the first time, about the same spot on the field for about the same yardage. At the 29, Vernon Dean coming up to make the hit. Riggins already going to the oxygen. Well, you know, a guy 35 years old has carried the ball as many times as he's carried. He deserves a little extra attention on the sideline. I think you're probably right. See, Phil Sims quarterback rating 146.2. Now, the top you can get is 157 and a fraction. So he is about as close to perfect as you could get. No interceptions on the year. Seven touchdown passes in two games on second and four. Carpenter. And not much there. Dexter Manley, number 72, makes the stop. And Dexter was getting himself all revved up when we talked to him yesterday, wasn't he? Dexter told me, he says, Coach, I have my game plan. No rookie tackle is going to keep me out of that uh, quarterback's face. <laughs> and he's got a good rookie tackle. You bet. That's uh, William Roberts, who is the uh, number one draft pick from Ohio State. But there, of course, he's used to run blocking. Dexter feels he's a better run blocker, and he can beat him with an outside move. That's what he, he told us yesterday. So we'll see. Third down and five. Giants at their 27. Sims has him in the shotgun. Sims looking downfield. He's got Johnson one more time. First down at the 49-yard line of the Washington Redskins. Curtis Jordan made the stop. Three catches for Johnson already. Right. The fault was really not the safety. The fault was Brian Carpenter, number 41. He allowed the man to escape and then go to the corner untouched, seeing that's too much pressure on that defensive safety. In this case, number 22, Curtis. In this case, number 22, Curtis. 24-yard pickup on the play. Joe Gibbs of the Redskins looks on. As Dick mentioned, he's looked at everything, trying to figure out why the Redskins are losing. They're checking people stealing their signals, among other things. First and 10 from the 49. Of the Redskins, Sims sta standing strong in the pocket. Tipped in the air and incomplete intended for Johnson. And a good defensive play by little Daryl Green, number 28, who got high in the air and knocked that one down. And Sims shaking his head, I think, in admiration. Well, not only that, he's shaking his head because you'll see on the right-hand side of your screen, Dexter Manley, number 72, will come on around. See 66 right there, William Roberts. He gets beat to the inside right there, and he gets put to the ground. Legal contact. That'll set up second and 10 for the Giants at the 49-yard line. Dexter had kind of an off year last year. The coaches really challenged him. He worked hard in the offseason, and they said he had a great training camp. Well, he's back where he was a couple of years ago. Coaches thought maybe he got a little complacent last year. No flag. Carpenter looking for some running room. Earns a couple of tough yards to the 47-yard line. Rich Malott, number 57, making the stop. What they really mean in terms of Dexter Manley's performance last year, the first half of the season, he really played well. And then the second half of the season, his performance was not consistent. And they're trying to motivate him to be consistent every Sunday because the paycheck is the same every Sunday. They that's, just want to make sure he's earning it. That's a good point. He's talking a lot less this morning, this year, too, I noticed. Third down. Giants need eight for the first down with the ball at the 47-yard line of the Washington Redskins. 
Sims gets it away, and Ernest Gray makes a great leaping extended catch at the 34. First and 10, New York. May have been shaken up a little bit. Yeah, he's hurting as he comes off the field. He re really was extended up there. He's back there in the shotgun. Now you'll see Sims just pedaling the cross charges inside. They pick him up nicely, contrary to how they used to do it. There he was, one-on-one, -on, -one on the defensive back. Daryl Green, number 28, and Daryl Green's the best one they have. Sims, four out of five for 13 yards. Gray is shaken up. Now, they use the other two wide receivers, the youngsters, Byron Williams and Bob Johnson, to bring in the plays. At least up until this point, Joe Morris trying to get outside. Dexter Manley got a piece of him, slowed him down a little bit, and then Vernon Dean came up from the secondary, number 32, to finish him off. It's hard to run outside with a pullback that way consistently and be successful because the defensive ends, Frank, play so wide. And in that case, it makes it really tough for like a William Roberts playing left tackle to block Dexter Manuel, and he just pushed it right on out to the sideline for the other defenders to make the play. No gain on the play. It'll be second and 10 from the 34-yard line. Byron Williams, the speech through, caught the long touchdown against Dallas last week, is off to the right. Sims floating it toward the end zone, and the catch is made down on the two-yard line by little Phil McConkey, who came in replacing Ernest Gray. What a catch by this rookie. 27-year-old rookie out of the Naval Academy, had to put in the full time with the Navy, and this year he's a rookie. Sims drops straight back there in bump and run coverage. And he lays it up over the outside under pressure, and McConkey turns back the other way. He was actually running, looking inside, and then saw the ball going over the outside shoulder and made a complete turn to make that play. Excellent job by an old rookie. <laughs> an old rookie. And there he is, Phil McConkey, accepting congratulations. What a thrill it is for him just to make this giant team. First and goal to go, just outside the one-yard line. Sims going to try to jam it in with Carpenter over the left side. They got it. Touchdown, New York. People keep wanting to know why are the Giants different. It's obvious. They can score points this year where they could not in the past. Here he goes up over the top. The same play you've seen other people do week in and week out from high school level to college level to John Riggins to the little high school back. They can all do that one. Get up in the air and get it in the end zone. Ali Hachi Sheik to try the extra point. Giants have been scoring so many points that he hasn't had a field goal attempt in the first two games, which tells you that your offense is doing a pretty darn good job. Three minutes, two seconds left to play in the first period. Giants 7, Redskins 7 will be back in just a moment. The Redskins' long touchdown drive didn't seem to phase the Giants. They took the football, moved 78 yards smartly down the field. The big play, the 33-yard. Mass reception by young Phil McConkey. Ali Haji Sheik. And the deep man is Mike Nelms, one of the premier kick returners in all of professional football. High kick, a little bit short. Nelms fields this one at the 15. Across the 20 and is decked at the 23 yard line. I mean, Robbie Jones, number 51, came in and put a hit on him, <laughs> stood him straight up. Time is out, 2.54 left to play in the opening period, what shapes up to be an exciting football game here at RFK Stadium in Washington. Bill Parcells, the second-year head coach of the New York Giants looking on, and thus far he's got to be very proud of this giant football team. First and ten, Redskins have the ball at the 24-yard line following the kickoff. Heisman feeding the ball to Riggins, ties the right side out to the 25 across the 30. And near the 35-yard line, Curtis McGriff, number 76, finally riding him out of bounds. I love Riggins' practice gear. Did you notice him yesterday? He's the most casual Saturday practice guy you ever want to see. I'll tell you, though, on Friday, he was intense. You could see that he is not satisfied with the kind of performance, and he was going to make sure that his contribution was going to be positive today. He was really working. He picked up nine on that play. It'll be second down, and one needed for the first down. Don Warren. 33. Excuse me, Frank. Virgil C. in motion across the backfield. Riggins tried to pick up the first, and it'll be close. 
be somewhere down at the bottom of that pile of one thing I noticed when you when we were talking to the Redskins yesterday and you were talking to Mark May uh, they weren't blaming people for this 0-2 star, were they? You know, I got there early Friday morning, and I walked around the practice field. Nobody was there, and Mark May was sitting on the bench. And I went over to him and said, Mark, things aren't going well, are they? And he said, Coach, I'm just not playing well. I've got to get better this weekend. And I thought that was really a great thing for a guy to say. It's so easy to blame the other guy in football. As a coach, you got to love that type of attitude. Love that attitude. First and 10. Redskins pick it up at the 35-yard line. Two minutes left in the opening period. 7-7 ball game. Riggins. Third straight carry. Gets maybe a yard or two. Harry Carson leading the charge, and we get a flag. Lawrence Taylor apparently feeling a roughing call coming up here. An unsportsmanlike conduct against the uh, Giants trying to state his case. Watch the offensive line play that deep. The New York Giants do a real nice job. E. Hardison, number 79, stacks it up a little bit. He gets straightened up, moves it back to the other side. Carson's right in there. Here comes McLaughlin. They all want a piece of that guy. Jim Burt, the nose guard, number 64. I didn't see a personal foul there. Well, now they call holding. They change it to holding, and they move the ball to the 49-yard line of the Giants. That'll be a first and 10 for the Redskins. Maybe not a personal foul, but uh, they say Taylor did hold Monk to the left side Virgil C replacing the injured Charlie Brown to the right Walker the tight end on the reverse taking the handoff from Theismann gets maybe a yard that was a little slow in developing look at Taylor is he fired up he is really pumped up talking to everybody <laughs> white shirts and blue shirts alike you know, he could be their defensive leader if he continues to mature. He's a leader on the field, and what he has to learn to do if he's really going to lead a National Football League team is to lead them off the field as well. Take George. a look at some other scores here as we uh, talk about the action. A lot of close games today. Bears are still undefeated at 3-0. and Second down, eight. Redskins at the 47th of the Giants. Into the middle by Theismann going long down the far sideline intended for Monk. Redskins fans thought that interference might be in order as Haynes, number 36. Mark Haynes was back there with him, but no call. Notice Joe is going without the uh, non glare that he usually wears under the eyes. It's almost been a trademark with him. Changing his image. Mark Haynes did a real nice job of running one on one down the sideline with a fine receiver in Art Monk, number 81 but Mark Haynes is one of the better single coverage guys in football. He can do that. Third down. Redskins come up to the line of scrimmage, needing eight for the first down with the ball at the giant 48-yard line. Score tied at seven with a minute seven left in the opening period. Theismann, good protection. Completes it to Warren, and that should be good for the first down if everything indeed is in order. Byron Hunt coming up to make the stop on Don Warren, the tight end, number 85. Now you watch the tight end to your right of your screen, number 85. See, people were putting pressure on him, just laid it out there in man-to-man -man coverage with a linebacker. Byron Hunt, number 57. That is normally a mismatch, but Byron Hunt can play man-to-man -man on a tight end many times. Take a look at the Redskins bench. Theismann told us yesterday he remembers Byron Hunt very well. He broke a couple of his teeth two years ago. Of course, Joe is the only guy in the league that wears that one bar on the helmet. Everybody else in the league has at least two. First and 10 from the 34. Taylor is blitzing, trying to catch up to Theismann, and he gets it away just in time and hits Monk, who springs loose from the tackle. Finally dropped at the 25. Looked like he had some running room, and Kenny Hill, number 48, the former Raider, finally ran him down. That shows you now a little play action, counter action in there, pulling people. He's wanted to go deep, but it was covered, and he came back to his layoff. And now Art Monk, it's such an advantage to be 209 pounds as a receiver. He has finally pulled down there. We're at the end of one quarter in Washington. Back in just a moment. Frank Lieber along with Dick Vermeil as you look at Bill Parcells, the head coach of the Giants, who made an interesting comment to us about his team yesterday. Right now, he's watching the Redskins, who are second and three at the 26-yard line. 
And we welcome those of you who have been watching the uh, Indianapolis-St. Louis game. Here's Riggins trying to pick up the first down. Our score here is 7-7. You saw a great ball game, 34-33. St. Louis with a winner. Well, you're talking to Parcells. Looks like they got the first down. He described this giant team as a very fragile team. What do you think he meant by that thing? Well, meaning they're not used to winning, okay? And there's always going to be the guys that have been around there in the losing atmosphere, and they're wondering, is it a mirage? Are we really this good? You know, are we going to continue to win? The sort of the doubting Thomas attitude. That's why if they could get by this one, that guy can change the attitudes if he's around them long enough. First down, Redskins at the Giant, 21. Art Monk in motion. Riggins the single back. Now Walker goes in motion. Theismann. Thought that Virgil C. was going to go long, and C. pulled up short. So the pass is incomplete for an NFL Today report. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Frank, here's the winning field goal by Neil O'Donohue for the Cardinals against the Indianapolis Colts. The difference in this game was the fact that the Colts missed an extra point. And I think O'Donohue had one coming. He's missed a lot of big ones in the last couple of years for St. Louis. Let's go back now. Well, Jim Hannafin, as you saw, Brett, a very happy man. As you mentioned, O'Donohue has missed a few big ones. <laughs> and a few of those were against the Giants. Remember that less than memorable Monday night game last year? Second and ten, Redskins at the 21-yard line of the Giants. Theismann, good protection, spears Monk at the ten. And Monk is down to the eight-yard line. It's a first down for the Redskins. First and goal. Theismann right on the money. He's Very fine execution. You can see him going across man-to-man -man on Kenny Hill, number 48. Now he breaks to the outside. You can see Hill had the inside position on that man-to-man -man like he should be, but he was just a little too far away for a really well-thrown ball. Redskins continue to do an excellent job of ball control here. Had the football just a couple of times and kept it for a long period of time. Monk already five receptions for 54 yards. And we've just started the second period. He's the leading pass receiver in the NFC. Coming in this week, first and goal from the eight. Riggins getting a block from Walker. Moves it to the six, close to the five-yard line before Mark Haynes, number 36, comes up from the secondary. And the fifth-year man makes the stop. Bloodlines run deep. Brother Mike, outstanding cornerback with the defending world champion Los Angeles Raiders. Don Warren did a real nice job that time of blocking Andy Hedden, the left outside linebacker, number 54. But like you said, Haynes came up there and, and made a nice play. Nose of the ball just outside the five. Second and goal, Washington. Riggins to about the three. Riggins dealing out some punishment, and the Giants giving him some right back. Redskins have had some big injury problems this year. Now watch the wing back right here in the one back attack. Go in motion here and trap right up inside and then they hand the football up there. That's the advantage of the one back attack. Now watch him move inside. Now watch him go up there and smack right on the nose guard. Bert right there. But unfortunately the play broke down outside the point of attack. Third down. Goal to go from the three. Garrett in motion, Theismann to throw. Touchdown, Joe Washington. There's a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. Could be a holding call. Let's see. Hold everything. Holding against the Redskins. Wipe it out. You know, that play is really like a little sandlot play. They just say, Joe Washington, you're going to be man-to-man -man covered down here. Just go get open. 74 offense. Holding will replay the down. That's a costly one against George Stark. That's the head hog, too. Yes, the old veteran offensive lineman. But crime he's been playing for 12 years. He's 36 years old. Let's see. Now, George Stark, number 74, on George Martin, number 75. Let's see if he really holds. Here he goes. He's going to probably pull him down right there. He's got him there by the jersey. Official didn't like that one. That'll move it back to the 13-yard line. It'll be third and goal from the 13. Theismann trying to buy 
buy some time. Hits Monk at the one-yard line. He's out of bounds. It'll be fourth and a yard needed for the touchdown. Now follow Art Monk across. You see he's going up there. He's going to bang into another Kenny Hill, number 48, who's got him man-to-man. -man. Everyone's playing real tight. Now watch the play right here. He goes up in the air, the advantage of being the big, tall, 209-pound receiver. Here Joe just about gets decked right there. Just about. He did get decked. <laughs> They're going to go for it. That's the reason for the crowd reaction and the Redskins trying to quiet him down. That was Leonard Marshall coming around from the defensive right hand side that got to Joe late. Ronsley in the backfield along with John Riggins. Riggins over the right side. He's in. Touchdown. and it's 13 to 7 Washington with the extra point trying to come did you see Harry Carson make contact on this watch a linebacker up here now as he goes up in there now watch Carson boom he hits him right there he doesn't think he scored but he actually did <laughs> Heisman holds Mosley's kick did not get it missed it left so the kick is no good. The Redskins lead 13 to 7 with 11 minutes and 42 seconds left to play in the first half. The book on the Redskins scoring drive, the interesting figure, the time. They've had the ball now a couple of times and run off two scoring drives, which have eaten up about 12 minutes on the clock. But hockey is the deep man for the Giants. Hayes kicking off high, a little bit short at the eight-yard line. McConkey to the 15 and is really unloaded upon at the 20-yard line. Big time hit that time by Anthony Jones, number 82, the rookie tight end. Take a look at McConkey as he really gets blasted here, Dick. He does. You know, this kid Jones is a really prototype physically built tight end, and you can see he has the physical ability to make plays like that. He's going to be a good one. Giants ball first and 10 from their 20-yard line. Ernest Gray was shaken up earlier, is back in there. He's on the wing off to the left-hand side. Byron Williams is wide to the right, up at the top of your screen. Joe Morris trying to find some running room outside, gets out to the 22 or 23-yard line. Little Joe from Syracuse who broke all of the rushing records there. Jim Brown, Floyd Little, uh, all the rest to really come around for the... Uh, for the Giants had a bit of a fumbling problem, didn't he, first? He has great quickness, and he also had a reception problem. He couldn't catch the ball cleanly, and their new running back coach, Ray Hanley, who really had vision problems himself, sent him to an eye doctor, and they found out he needed contact lenses badly. They pick up a three on the play at his second and seven for the Giants at their 23. Sims looks left, goes right. Incomplete and almost intercepted, intended for Gray. Daryl Green was out there. We got a flag. Hold everything. Flag was thrown about 10 yards short of the point where the ball was thrown. So it's going to go. Looks like against uh, the Redskins. Maybe a pass interference call here. Interference, 22 defense, first down. That's against Curtis Jordan, number 22. And it's interesting to note, Dick, uh, he's not the regular there. The regular is Mark Murphy, who's been their quarterback on defense for a lot of years. Well, he hurt his knee. Here we go with a replay of it. Now, you see Phil going straight back. He has a pressure up inside. He throws it out over there. You can see tight coverage. I don't see 22. It's really 28, not 22. The official made the first mistake of the day. How about that? First and 10 Giants, they'll take it nevertheless. It's a 17-yard penalty. And they'll move the ball from their 40-yard line. Williams in motion, flag down. Sims to throw, in trouble, gets it away. And it's intercepted by Dean. Vernon Dean picks it off at the 44-yard line. Let's check the penalty now. I think Byron Williams was moving forward when the ball was snapped. The man you saw moving on your screen moved forward right prior to the snap. It's going to be the Redskins ball. Illegal motion, 87 offense, penalty refused, first down. 
You got it. That's got to be a big moment for uh, Vernon Dean, who won his starting job back almost by default this week. He was a great rookie for him, had his problems last year, and is being given another opportunity. You can see Williams right here, number 87, was going in motion, and then he, but he started forward a little too soon, and he was heading across the pattern field right there, and this man right here, this receiver, was going, taking him real deep, trying to get under. He had plenty of time coming off the action fake, but unfortunately... Now watch him right there. See him forward just a little bit, crossing the field, underneath the other receiver. Now he lays it up. Defender right there, interception. And we've got a timeout. Difference. Take a look at this stat from last year and then check the standings for these two clubs <laughs> last year. You bet. Redskins were the best. First and 10, Washington from its 42. Theismann, sideline throw wide open at the 50-yard line is Virgil C. And ripped out of bounds by Perry Williams. Number 23, that should be enough for the first down. Statistical note, Sims interception the first of the year for Sims and the Giants. And for the Redskins defense, Dean's interception was the first of the year for the Redskins. Contrary to li how they like to play defense. They're the always trying to contest every throw, contest every receiver, intercept the ball, create the turnover. Haven't been doing it. Today they're doing it. Other scores. You saw the Raiders in that seesaw battle finally come up short as Kansas City. Now 3-0. First and 10. Redskins at the Giant 45. Riggins. They're about the 41-yard line. A pickup of four on that play for John Riggins getting a Big workout today in the early going. Other scores. Just one there for you. San Diego leading Houston. Going to be a long year for the Oilers. Warren Moon or not. Coming up next Saturday on CBS. Great matchup. Top-ranked UCLA. Nebraska taking on seventh-ranked UCLA. That's a revenge thing. Nebraska beat them bad last year. And UCLA wants to come back. Ted, the other thing, Frank, UCLA has been pointing to this game since the opening kickoff of the regular season. Second down, six. Redskins at the 41-yard line of the Giants. Again, Riggins. Got Hogs out in front, but not enough. Takes it to the 39, gets two on the play. Joe McLaughlin, number 52, into the tackle for the Giants. Happy to get a starting call today, Mr. McLaughlin. I visited with him in the locker room. You know, he's been a fine special teams player, and he's so excited about being able to actually line up and play linebacker now. He's a guy that's really is a great example of how important it is to be persistent in the National Football League if you want to be uh, successful. Just stayed after it and stayed after it. Well, let's correct that score for you. We were giving it to you backwards. Raiders beat Kansas City 22 to 20. Third down, five. Redskins from the 40. Virgil C., the intended receiver, the defender that time, uh, Hill, Kenny Hill, number 48, fell down. Speaking of the Raiders, uh, Hill was obtained by the Giants from the Raiders just about a week before the start of the regular season when uh, was Bill Currier was it got hurt. You know, Bill Parcell told me on the practice field third, he said, you know, that, that, guy, that guy was good enough to play for the Raiders four years. He's good enough to play for us. They've won more games than we have. Good thinking. Fourth down. Jeff Hayes in to do the putting. He's one of the better so-called pooch kickers in the National Football League. McConkey is deep. He really he's does. A, he's a real specialist in putting it out of bounds inside the 20. He only had two touchbacks last year in kicking. See him pop that ball way up in the air? That's high, but it's not going to be anywhere near out of bounds. And uh, McConkey in heavy traffic. Feeling it for the fair catch at the 20-yard line. Only 20 yards on that punt and zero on the return. Nine minutes, 28 seconds left to play in the first half. Fine fall afternoon here at RFK Stadium. We got a great ball game working. He kicked that ball. It never pays to relax. Now watch this. He's going to take his helmet off. Boom, he gets bumped into by Perry Williams there. And they went on, hey, what you doing there, kiddo? Perry taking a little shot at him there with the right hand. What do you think he really said? Uh, pardon me. <laughs> and 10 Giants at the 19-yard line. They trail 13 to 7. Second period action here at RFK Stadium. Carpenter at the 25. Nice cutback across the 30 to the 35-yard line.
And a 15-yard pickup, Rich Malott, number 57. There's a savvy veteran running back. This guy is one of the great cutback runners. Now watch him roll to the right. Now watch him cut back up underneath Dexter Manley, the defensive end who had over-penetrated. Now he gets a block downfield by Johnson, number 88. He gets another block out there by the wide receiver. I can't see his number right there. He's going to pop that thing. He does a great job of cutback running. First and 10 for the Giants at their 36-yard line. Rob Carpenter, one-time Houston Oiler. And a mainstay of the Giants, but he's been able to stay healthy. Sims, under pressure, unloads Byron Williams. The rookie from Texas Arlington, no catch. He dropped it, juggled it, going out of bounds. Had he hung out of the ball, it would have been ruled no catch because of the juggling act. This is the real speed burner in the uh, the Giants' young offensive crew. He has fine speed, but he can also run with the ball. Now watch two men on Dexter Manuel, number 72. Dexter Manley, 72. Him, see, William Roberts blocking him right there, the young rookie. Now Ard, the guard for number 67, does a good job of helping him to the inside. That allows Roberts to compensate to the outside. Second and 10 from the 36-yard line. Sims. Again, a good rush, and there he goes. Sims sacked back at the 28-yard line. Monty Coleman came through on the blitz, number 51 for the Redskins. And was the first to get there, but the reinforcements arrived quickly. Look at the left side of the screen. Monty Coleman, number 51, going to be picked up there by Joe Morris, number 20, the little short guy. He's overpowered right there. Joe's got to be able to do a better job of that if he's going to remain a starter in that backfield, Frank. Yeah, but that's a physical mismatch. He's got uh, 50 pounds on him, doesn't he? Hey, he can do it. He weighs 185 pounds. He's tough enough. He can block better than that. He's going to have to. Third down, 17 for the Giants. They've been shoved back to their 28. Redskins showing blitz again. Let's see if they come. Now they're backing off. Sims unloads it for Williams. Williams, the speedster, did not catch it. We got a marker back at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be holding against the Giants. So uh, Williams uh, doing that juggling act. He did it a couple of weeks ago in the uh, Giants' first uh, game against the Eagles. And that time, uh, juggle one first on this side, then on the far side, out of bounds. Holding, 63 offense, penalty refused, fourth down. Carl Nelson, one of those young linemen for the Giants. Hey, look at what Parcells has done. Isn't it very close to what Gibbs did in 1981 when he brought in the Hogs? These big guys, these big guys, and he's got young offensive tackles. That's the nucleus of an offensive line. Nelms on the return from the 30 to the 35 is dropped at the 40-yard line. And the Redskins will put it in play from there. 41 yards on the punt. And 10 on the return. 7.48 left to play in the first half. Giants unbeaten. Washington winless. Back in a moment. Washington, that's the picture here in the second period of play. Redskins have a first and 10 from their 40-yard line. Giants going to have to stop those long drives. Two Giants, excellent drives. They're, they're capable of doing that, too. They've got to contest them just a little bit more, be a little more physical up there in front. Skins in one drive went five and a half. Another one went six and a half. Riggins, this time, tripped up behind the line of scrimmage by a horde of blue shirts. Great job by Andy Hedden, number 54, the outside linebacker. Now, this is what I just mentioned. Contest the play. Get it pushed up field. Now, watch to the left side of your screen. Now, watch Andy Hedden, number 54. See? Work up the field, make him bow back, make him bow back. Don't let him come forward. Allow the other people to come in and get a piece of it. Did a nice job of controlling that line of scrimmage. We've talked so much about the Giants' defense. It's interesting to note they actually have seven new starters this year. Three guys up front, a couple of linebackers, a couple of guys in the secondary. And on this Giants team, 12 of the 22 starters, all total, are new. Second and 11. Joe Washington has replaced Riggins. Going to the tight end, Warren. McLaughlin, 52, there immediately, along with Kenny Hill. Joe Theismann celebrated his 35th birthday last Sunday. Yes, he did. His, his daughter, Amy, took him out for a little birthday luncheon at Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor here during the week, and they sang happy birthday. Everybody there did. He said it was really an enjoyable day. Third down. 
Redskins looking at a long four for the first down from their 45. Garrett is wide to the right side. Monk in the slot off to the left now starts in motion. Heisman looks over the field. Intended for Monk over the middle. Talk about aggressive defense. That was fairly aggressive. The part of Kenny Hill. They got after him up there. And Casey Merrill, number 71, forced him to go ahead and get rid of the ball. He was actually wanted to go downfield a little bit further with it. But Casey Merrill came around there and got in his face and forced him to throw it quicker. It was questionable whether Casey was even going to play this week. Jeff Hayes is in to do the putting. And McConkey once again will be the deep man. The helicopter pilot, right? Yeah. Helicopter pilot in the Navy. It's up four years plus. That's a 10 minute on the line of scrimmage. Beautiful Great punt. kick. Oh, inside the five. And that, you would say, is a rookie mistake. You don't feel them that close to your own goal line. That was a beautiful punt. The hang time had to be in the 4 5 category. He's backing up inside the five yard line. He's got to be mature enough at that time to handle the pressure and let it go in the end zone. 51 yards on the kick. Welcome back to RFK Stadium. Giants with the football backed up to their goal line, and the Redskins are thinking turnover. First and 10 from the five yard line. Carpenter trying to get him some breathing room across the 10 after the 14 yard line. There's another another great example of Carpenter's roll cutback ability. He did a great job, just a great job, and the offensive lineman here did a good job. Now watch him start to the right, roll. See the linebacker, 57, moved inside. Morris hooked him. He jumped, bounced outside here. Now look at that. Vernon Dean, number 32, coming in to make the tackle, along with Curtis Jordan, number 22. Nine-yard pickup for Carpenter. Pittsburgh leading the Rams. And San Diego putting it on Houston in the second period. Our score 13 to 7. Redskins also second quarter. Second and one. Morris trying to pick up the first down. We talked to Joe Gibbs yesterday. He, of course, he was looking into everything as to why things were going bad for the Redskins, but they thought possibly that uh, they were tipping their blitz uh, last Monday night against San Francisco. Well, when you blitz a lot, it's hard to disguise all of them. And many times in preparation for a game, Frank, you and the quarterbacks and the rest of your offensive coaches can locate a key. It might be this defensive back that doesn't have as much confidence as the other guy, and so he's going to cheat, maybe slide to the inside. A linebacker may deepen many different things. Third down, less than a yard. We notice Butch Wolfolk in the ball game for the first time for the Giants. Number 25 at a running back position. Carpenter trying to pick up the first, and it's going to be close. Pretty strong defense that time. Saw Hedden come in motion, number 54. And I don't believe they got it. That's two situations they have not been able to convert that third and short. The guy that did a great job. The guy that did a great job was Neil Oakowitz, number 52, the middle linebacker. That forces Jennings to kick from the goal line. Elms is deep, nice punt. Backs him up to the 32, fumbles it, gets it back. 30, 35. That is dropped at the 38-yard line. We got a penalty marker thrown back at the line of scrimmage. Do you think there might be an illegal receiver downfield? That's the one we usually see. Yep, there's the indication. So the option will be with the Redskins, and they will make uh, the Giants, I'm sure, punt it over again. That was a 52-yard kick. Still out of punt. We'll penalize five yards. Still fourth down. I would believe they'll ask him to kick it over because Nelms is a great offensive weapon. You know, he's normally very close to averaging a first down every time he catches a punt because he makes 10 yards. That's one first down the offense doesn't have to make. You know? well, he's going to get another opportunity. See if he can top that 52 yarder. Nelms trying to do a little better on the return here as we got a discussion going on between uh, the officials and the Giants. Correction. There was no foul on the play. 34 was legally on the end of the line of the officials talked it over and they decided that uh, Elvis Patterson who was the outside man was legally on the end of the line of scrimmage so 
We go back down to the other end of the field, and the Redskins will take over at the 39-yard line as Joe Gibbs looks on. Four minutes, 12 seconds left to play in the first. Team to seven. Redskins have the football. First and ten at their 39-yard line. Walker, who is called the move tight end of the Redskins offense in motion. Theismann, a little sprint out pass he likes to throw. In trouble, behind the line, unloads it. And an excellent, excellent recovery by Terry Kennard, number 43, who came from halfway across the field to deflect that pass away. That kind of play is made by a first-round draft choice. That's why he was picked. Now watch this. He's just moving inside out on the ball, looking at him at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Here he is, Terry Kennard, number 43, moving inside, lunge, leap. Great job. That would have been a big play if he had caught it. Would have certainly been a first down, as it turns out, in his second and 10 now for the Redskins at their 39. Washington is in. Riggins is out. Monk wide to the right side, just off the bottom of your screen. Washington, who can run it, as well as being a fine pass receiver, gets a couple that time, and McLaughlin, number 52 in the stuff. McLaughlin's a sixth-year man out of the University of uh, Massachusetts, signed as a free agent by the Giants back in 1979, formerly with Buffalo, has had some problems with the knee, but a very persistent player. This was some comeback today by New England. I mean, they were down, as I recall, 23 to nothing in that ballgame. New England, you know, they have the people, and everyone's raving about how good they're going to be. And we'll see them next weekend as they take on the Washington Redskins up in Foxborough. Cowboys are 6-0 ahead of Philadelphia in the second period of play. Our score, 13-7. Redskins lead the Giants. Third down. Redskins need nine for the first down at their 40. Theismann on a little half roll. Pass is deflected. And comes down out of bounds. Somebody got a piece of that one. So they put Theismann under pressure, but one thing we haven't really seen uh, Lawrence Taylor get through that much here in the first half. Lawrence Taylor's been blocked efficiently by those people using the different techniques, either sliding the big offensive tackle out to him or putting the, the movement back on him or putting Don Warren in a left formation letting the 245-pound tight end block him. The Parcell said something to Bukaki about feeling that last punt at the five. I, Bill's the kind of guy you very seldom ever misunderstand, especially when he's mad. He comes to the point quickly. Quickly. I think he's a fine leader. Jeff Hayes to do the punting. McConkey at the 25. Gets just a yard, and that's it. 35 yards on the punt, one on the return. Joe Theismann trying to figure out how to attack. This Giants defense. He sent his passes in fewer deep balls downfield. Redskins much maligned defense digging in on third down and five. Giants two out of five so far in third down possessions. From the shotgun, Sims strong arm to McConkey over the middle at the 45 and hurdles his way to the 49-yard line for the first down. Now tell me, how'd he get that wide open? It was a broken coverage. They blew it mentally. They turned him loose. He was lined up in the slot. Just went down and turned inside, and the coverage left him. Now they're all talking there on defense. One guy, Tony Peters, puts up his hand and says, Who? What me? Who was it? Clock running down to the two-minute warning here in the first half. The Giants are driving. And keep in mind that uh, Mosley missed the extra point following the Redskins' second touchdown. That could be a big factor before this ball game is over. First and ten, Giants at their 49. Pressure unloads and a great diving catch by McConkey and complete. out of bounds at the 35. You talk, you talk about throwing the ball under pressure. Dexter Manley was right there in his face, driving William Roberts right back into. Watch the left side of your screen now. See him appearing right there. Here he comes. Here comes Dexter and he still unloads that ball. Now he comes back to the ball nicely, beating Vernon Dean, number 32. Heck of a job by that quarterback. McConkey, his third catch of the day. We got a timeout here in Washington. Here in the first half, the Giants with a first and ten at the Redskin 35. Both clubs have all three of their timeouts left. Williams in motion, handoff Wolfolk. Stacked up for a loss at the 37-yard line. 
little altercation. Now they're going to call a penalty on both sides. <laughs> Normally do. Both look a little hot. Belly had been mistreated. The Redskins did a great job that time. Charles Mann, number 71, of getting upfield and not allowing the play to get started. We have offsetting, unnecessary roughness fouls, <laughs> personal foul 63, personal foul 72. The down count is second down. He's reading your mail, or you're reading his one. Here's 63, Art blocking right there on Rich Malott, 57. I don't see any altercation. Oh, here it goes. Now we're going to shove. You can't do that. Dexter Manley's involved in it. Number 72. As it turns out, it costs the Giants a down. It's second and 12 from the 37-yard line. Sims unloading to the near sideline. Tended for Johnson. And well covered. Dean was over there. And so was Peters, number 23. Timeouts, obviously, not a problem here with a minute 44 to go. We get into a field goal situation. Keep in mind that Ali Haji Sheik is one of the strongest legs in the National Football League. He's kicked him as far as 56 yards. Coming up at halftime, all kinds of interesting things. Scores and highlights with Brent Nerve from the studio in New York. And a Legends of the Game feature on Bullet Bob Hayes, the former star of the Dallas Cowboys. Redskins showing blitz on third and 12. And here they come after Sims. He has to unload it quick. Intended for Byron Williams. That would have been a first down at the 25-yard line. And Sims knows it. He did a nice job of reading it. The deep uh, offensive line and backs it out. Nice job of picking it up. He just threw it a little bit behind the guy slanting in. That's too bad. Now they're going to give the Sheik a shot here. And this is going to be a, a moon shot. Of course, he's kicked him as far as 56. He kicked two last year. Attempted one from 66 and missed it. Line of scrimmage will be the 37, so they'll spot it at the 44, which will make it a 56-yarder. All right, let's see where they'll spot it. At the 45, so make it a 55-yard field goal attempt. Up. Not enough. Probably a little rusty leg. That's his first field goal attempt this year. Well, Parcells told us yesterday that he has seen him kick it 72 yards in practice. 72-yard right. field goal. And he feels on AstroTurf that he would always try it uh, even up to 60 yards. Another great doubleheader on CBS next Sunday. Depending on where you happen to be, you'll see San Francisco take on Philadelphia. Or Washington against New England. And uh, Dick and I will be there. 49ers seem to be in high gear. And the second game of the Twin Bill. You Giant fans will see your team in action against Tampa Bay. And a lot of the rest of you will see the Packers take on the Dallas Cowboys. A renewal of one of great football rivalries of the 60s. First and 10 Redskins at their 37th as they take over at the line of scrimmage. Following the failed field goal blitz on Theismann and down he goes. Jim Burt, the nose tackle number... 64. I don't know if you call it a blitz when the nose tackle gets him. Must have stunned it around the outside. Now, nose guard, see him there right to the right side of your screen. See 64. He's working there, working right there on Russ Grimm, 68. He beat him to the outside. It looked like a blitz because he got there so That's quick. That's right, exactly. I thought it had to be a blitz, but it really wasn't. He spent the whole offseason rehab rehabbing his back because he had a herniated disc injury last year and missed a good part of the year. Just in case the Redskins get close. Mosley wants to be sure he's warm. Second down, 19. Redskins at their 27. Again, Eisman in trouble, and Martin sacks him back at the 20-yard line. George Martin. His brother Doug is with the Vikings coming through with his first sack of the day, and the Redskins are in reverse gear. Here he is, number 75, coming a hard outside rush right there on George Stark, number 74. He beats him right there with a good jerk move. He pulled him forward. There he now... Heisman has no place to go. Nice leaping move right there. And that's the guy that Parcell says is really the leader of this football team because he leads them both on and off the field. Giants have called the timeout to stop the clock. They're hoping now that uh, they'll be in position to force the Redskins at least to punt, maybe get another shot at a field goal. Giants still have two timeouts left. You see the time remaining in the first half, 58 seconds. You know, we've talked about the youth of the Giants, the experience of the Redskins. It's interesting to compare those figures. Well, the Giants average 3.5 years experience. 
and the average age is 25.4. And in contrast, the Redskins' average experience is 6.1 years, and their average age is 28. There is a difference. It's a much more mat mature team. This offensive line uh, has to be impressive for as little experience as they've had, the offensive line of the Giants, and that's what Gibbs did in 81. He, he got these guys, and Parcells said this year, don't give me these 250-pounders, I want the 270-pound guys. The personnel did a, part from George, uh, did a great job along with George Young, and they gave some players to coach. Third down and 26. Redskins at their own 20. Heisman undaunted. Completes the pass. No, Washington didn't hold it, they say. He was bobbling it. Couldn't see it from this angle, but obviously he juggled it out of bounds because he did come down with it. And now the Redskins are going to have to punt from deep in their own territory, and the Giants could still be in position to at least try a field goal. Jeff Hayes has kicked him 22 yards. 50 yards and Phil McCockey brought a surprise today with three catches for 67 yards as Ernest Gray has been shaken up and so is uh, Bobby Johnson so McCockey seeing some action in wide receiver fair catch McCockey at the 39 40 yards on the punt zero on the return and the Giants in position where a couple of forward passes could Get them in a position to try a field goal. And once again, uh, Hayes does the number. Coming up, September 29th. That's a week from next Saturday, the return of Jerry Cooney. He goes against uh, Phil Brown. Ten-round heavyweight bout. It's been two years now since Cooney has uh, fought, and he's come down with various injuries, but he's healthy. He's ready to go. He's been training up in Eugene, Oregon up a week from next Saturday, September 29th. First and 10 Giants at their 40-yard line. Shotgun Sims over the middle and out of the hands of Tony Galbraith, number 30, who was wide open. And Sims took a pretty good pop that time. And look at that elbow. He took a shot there, too. You can see the problem he's having getting the ball off. Watch the defensive left end, right end, 72, come off on William Roberts, number 66. Beat him to the outside, and bow, he gives him lunch right there. Boy, that is really tough, Frank, when the quarterback can't see that guy coming. They're going to have to give Roberts some help. Hurts even more when the receiver drops the pass. Second and ten. Sideline throw intended for Byron Williams. He was well covered by Daryl Green, number 28. And that'll set up third and 10. Roberts did a much better job on Dexter Manley that time, Frank. He set firmer. He didn't allow him to drive him back and then get him turned to beat him to the outside. And he kept his arms extended. Much better fundamental te that, the technique that time. We're down to 36 seconds left to play in the first half. The Giants still have two timeouts to work with if they can pick up a first down. come in at a wide receiver. Another fine rookie. Sims blitz this time. Manley got him. I don't think anybody touched Dexter Manley. I, I really think the offensive lineman in the center snapped the ball in the wrong account. Now watch the offensive lineman don't even move when the ball is snapped. Boy, that is impossible to block the guy. Evidently, Kevin Belcher, the offensive center, snapped the ball early. Now, that really put the offensive lineman, like William Roberts, in the hole. So, good job by the Redskins' defense, and particularly Dexter Manley, the former Oklahoma State star. And now the Redskins calling the timeout as they want to give Nelms a shot at a return. And Dave Jennings getting his instructions. Joe Gibbs on the near sideline. You know, Joe went, what, 0-5 his rookie year. And after that, they've turned it around to the point where in the last three years, this is the first time they've lost two games in a row. That's quite a record. Yeah, he's done a great job of coaching. He's a fine football coach, which everybody knows, having been the NFL coach of the year two years in a row. I think what I recognize in him is great leadership ability on the field. Watching him coach his football team is really entertaining. Dave Jennings, nice high. Kick. Nelms 
disdained the fair catch. And one of the Giants breezed right by him. And look out, getting rough down there. The guy that really came in there flailing that time, so it appeared, is Frank Cephas, number 31, who is a Giants rookie. Who are they going to call a penalty on now? One of the Redskins was shaken up. I don't know as a result of the fight or as a result of the play, but he's flat on his back down at the 32-yard line. 36 on the punt, and we'll get a timeout here because of the injury. The penalty marker is down with 22 seconds. Press to play. Miles, we have offsetting 39 Washington, 44 New York. Daniel of the Giants mixing it up with uh, Otis Wansley of the Redskins. Looks like Alvin Garrett is down. Or Virgil Say. I can't I see an eight there anyway on his jersey. It's been a bad no. year so far injury-wise for the I Redskins. They already have 19 players on injured reserve, including six since they got down to the 49 roster uh, the week uh, prior to opening day. It is, I think, Alvin Garrett. Virgil C. is out in the huddle. One of the celebrated Smurfs of Redskin fame. And with Charlie Brown injured, they don't need an injury to another wide receiver. No, they don't. Defensive linemen, they're really thin right now, too. They start getting some people back here, I think, in the next couple weeks. And also releasing some of those guys that were hurt in training camp because it's been a period of time now they've been able to recover and rehab, and that injured reserve list will really drop down probably in half. Twenty-two seconds left to play in the first half. In a hard-fought, very physical football game, Redskins with two long drives, and the Giants countered with one. And Washington leads at 13 to 7 as Alvin Garrett needs some assistance. That does not look promising when you see him drag a knee like that. Well, what you hope he just strained it rather than really uh, tore a cartilage or a ligament or anything like that. It's hard to tell. Sometimes a, a knee overreacts to, and, and a player overreacts to that kind of pain, and then as the muscles relax around the knee and everything, then you can better diagnose what is wrong with it. Is it my imagination, or have we been playing these last two minutes for about the last 30? It seems like it. I think the second half is really going to be something. First and 10, Redskins at their 33. Feinsman over the middle to Joe Washington at the 40. Got the first down at the 46-yard line. Washington has still two timeouts left, and now Theismann is going to use one to stop the clock with nine seconds to go. And Joe will come over and... Uh, have a word with Joe Gibbs. I think the Redskins were checking this week to see if anyone was uh, stealing their signals, which they were concerned about after what's happened to them the last couple of weeks. Coming up, just nine seconds away, clock time, scores and highlights with Brent Nerve, and then a Legends of the Game feature which uh, spotlights the great Bob Hayes, and who uh, helped change, I think, defenses around the National Football League when he came in with his blazing speed. He's mentioned Joe is the only guy who wears that single bar. I don't know if that's... It looks, it looks old-fashioned, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> but it's... He likes it for the vision. He likes the vision. He doesn't want the uh, to ever throw the bad ball because something gets in his line of vision. And as we mentioned earlier, he doesn't uh, wear the eye shadow today either, the non-glare that you usually see on a, on a sunny day. They're going to x-ray Garrett's uh, right knee at halftime. That's the word from uh, the press box, and we'll relay the information as soon as we have it. Heisman is very close to many of the real old-time Redskin passing records held by Sammy Ball and, hey, Sonny Jorgensen. Yes, it's surpassed several this year. First and ten, Redskins at their 46. They'd like to give Mosley another shot at it. Heisman unloads. Should be good for another first down. Walker, number 88, the tight end. Makes Bill Sims, uh, as we said, had a tough first half. Seven out of 17 through his first interception of the year for a total of 117 yards. And Carpenter, the leading ball carrier for the Giants in the first half with nine carries for a total of 30 yards. Bill Parcells, the head coach of the New York Giants, and a very courageous guy. You know, he knew he was in hot water this year, yet he made a lot of these moves, which are really long-range moves. Well, his philosophy is, I'm gonna do it right. When I'm given a responsibility to do, regardless of the situation or the circumstances, 
He believes the management people are really trying to help him get this thing going, and it's obvious that they have. They're a good football team. They're playing good right now, playing real well, and they, they could win this one. Nelms will be the deep man as the Redskins own five victories in a row over the New York Giants. Giants haven't beaten them since back in 1981. As I recall, that happened here. Nelms at the goal line, feeling Ali Haji Sheik's kick straight up the middle. 15, 20, and dropped at that point, and he went down like a ton of bricks. Looked like Pete Shaw, number 44, got a piece of him and brought him down hard. Eighth-year veteran Pete Shaw, originally with the San Diego Chargers, came in and he, he got him high just on the shoulder pad and really flipped him on his back. Officials mark it at the 19-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Redskins. One Redskin touchdown drive, five and a half minutes in the first half. The other took six and a half minutes. So they've done a pretty good job controlling the football. Theismann at the throttle. Fake to Riggins, and Theismann comes out throwing in the second half of play. Completes it to Virgil C. over at the far side, and Kenny Hill, number 48, wraps him up. Those kind of plays don't take very much time, Frank. He just runs down there, runs a six or seven yard hitch, pops it to him from the corner. Good, positive game. And one of the Giants, uh, like it was Hill who made the tackle, was shaken up on the play. The ex-Los Angeles Raider being tended to in the fire side. That's been a position where they've had some injury problems this year with Bill Currier, the uh, incumbent being sidelined. They needed some help, and they uh, made the deal with the, with the Raiders right at the start of the regular season. So he hasn't been around that long, but uh, he's done pretty well. That's causes some concern for Bill Parcells. Len Fonte's the secondary coach from the New York Giants like him because he's such a smart guy coming out of Yale, and he, he really gives him stable leadership in the secondary. Timeout here at RFK Stadium. Comes forward, very close to the first down marker. Got an injury report from uh, down below. Alvin Garrett, sprained ankle. Not expected to return, so it's not an E, it's an ankle, which is probably good news. And to counter that, Ernest Gray of the Giants is having his elbow x-rayed, and he is not expected to return. So each team is minus one receiver. And speaking of injured receivers, <laughs> Charlie. Brown. Charlie Brown. Touchdown Brown. They miss him. Oh, I guess they so. Have. He led the NFC last year, was tied for the lead. 78 catches on the year. First and 10. Theisman looking for Monk. Intercepted by Haynes at the 40. 45 back to the 50 yard line. And the Giants have a first and 10 at the Redskin 48. Pass slightly underthrown, intended for Art Monk, who caught six in the first half and virtually all of them in the first period they're coming off a play action pass here trying to keep the safeties in the center see the safety number 43 sitting right inside terry Kennard. they wanted to keep him out of this now he's coming to the post he had the post but he just came right underneath mr haynes number 36 came right underneath that man what great body control interception now hey riggins gonna make tackle here john riggins making his first tackle of the year i'm sure timeout call against Dallas they took three or four turnovers and turned them into touchdowns Wolfolk got his ribs banged up against the Cowboys and was a questionable starter and in fact did not start Giants had their problems in the second period of play this is the way that uh, their various possessions went after one fine drive in the first half and in the ball game the Redskins in the first half held at 18 minutes plus to the Giants 11 minutes plus Redskins leading 13 to 7, second and nine. From the Washington 46, Sims back to throw it. Stands in there strong. He's got McConkey. 35 30, and the little man from Navy is down to the 25. We got two flags back at the line of scrimmage. Two hankies are down, and Sims says, No, come on now. Sims is claiming that he was face masked on the play. Holding 63 offense. He'll be second down after the 10 yard penalty. So that's a costly penalty for the Giants. Carl Nelson, youngster guilty of the holding call, and Sims not very happy at all. Let's see if, if they did have a face mask here. That well, he called. flicked him right there. You're darn right he got a face mask. Charlie Mann, number 71. Got there. The, he got him, and I think yes. Sims has a great. Sims was very confident that it was going to be a face mask. 
Got to shake it off and go ahead and play. Forget it. Second down, 19, with the ball moved back now to Giants territory at the 43-yard line. Sims under pressure. Drop back at the 34-yard line. Dexter Manley blew through there again and had a lot of help in the form of number 71, Charles Mann. So both defensive ends bowed to meet at the quarterback, now and they watch, did. Watch Dexter Manley, number 72. He's been beating him outside. This time he goes inside number 66, William Roberts, and William just couldn't handle it. But he actually got there in time to shake hands with Charlie Mann coming from the other side. Well, He's, what did you used to call in third and 28? <laughs> Yeah, I was on the conservative type, maybe a trap play or something like that. Giants backed up to their 35-yard line. Third down, 28. Good protection this time over the middle to Tony Galbraith. Takes it to the 45-yard line, a pickup of 17, but not nearly enough for the first down. Well, the Giants will be punting. The one thing that's obvious, Frank, is the morale of the Redskins has not sagged because of the 0-2. Joe said they'd worked hard all week, and it's obvious that they're playing with real enthusiasm right now. You saw Nelms, the deep man. Here's Jennings. Kicked it four times for 43 yards in the first half. Nelms, 35, or up to the 25, and just short of the 30-yard line, bumped out of bounds on the far side. And more injury problems for the Washington Redskins, who've been beat up pretty good. And it's Dexter Manley, number 72, who needs some. Good loom, very big. Sims, one-on-one -on -one coverage deep in the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Giants. He saw him coming and just loaded it out there for Bobby Johnson. And the Giants are an extra point away from taking the lead. Did a good job reading that defense, didn't he? He did a real good job. The defense was working to his left, so he saw the single coverage to his right, and he went for it, and he got the big play. Score tied at 13, and Haji Sheik tried to break the tie, and does. Here's our receiver right here, 88, Bobby Johnson. He's just going to take off, go right down here, beat Mr. Green right here, Fade away to the end zone for the touchdown. Take a look. Here he goes, coming off the line of scrimmage. Now see Green sink to the inside because he knows he has no help inside. He folded all the way to the back of the end zone for the touchdown. You'll just catch that right at the end. There it is, touchdown. So Bobby Johnson, the rookie wide receiver who had a try in the USFL, comes through with a big play. Back in 69, Subaru was pretty much alone. The lead in this football game for the first time, 14 to 13. Kicking off, Nelms will field it at the nine. Back to the 15, looking for his opening, but not much there. He does get across the 20 to the 22, and Byron Hunt, number 57 of the Giants, wraps him up. And Nelms is not happy because there wasn't that much of a hole for him. I, I sat next to uh, Nelms the other day in the locker room. Look at these big guys. There's the young man who scored the touchdown. What an addition he's been. Bobby Johnson played his college football at Kansas and then had a trial, didn't he, in the USFL? I think he was with the Philadelphia Stars for about three days, but he wasn't worth it. He just left. Well, he's turned into quite a fine for the New York Giants. First and ten Redskins at the 20-yard line. The fake to Riggins. Quick toss out to Monk. Gets a block to the 25, up to the 27-yard line. Walker gave him a good block. Kenny Hill, number 48, coming up to secure the tackle. Redskins have uh, moved Mark May from right guard to right tackle and brought in Ken Huff, so maybe there's a problem with George Dark. Must have gone down with an injury. I didn't see it happen, or didn't see anything. Oh, here he is down on the sideline. May, former number one draft pick out of Pittsburgh. There's the head hog. Second down, four. Riggins. 
This hard-nosed football gets it up to the 29. A little bit short of the first down. Eric Carson, number 53, in the stop. And uh, Dexter Manley's got some problems, looks like. They cannot afford to lose another defensive lineman. They only had six really physically capable of playing today. And they remember, they use a four-down lineman defense. So they only right now have one extra lineman suited up. And one of their guys was saying yesterday, if we lose anybody else, we may have to go to a 2-5. Yeah. Detroit and Tampa Bay in the third period. New Orleans has really come back. They were down 17 to nothing in that game. And our score, the Giants 14 and the Redskins 13. And the Redskins have their work cut out for them. Third down and two from the 28-yard line. Theisman trying to pick out a receiver. He's got Monk, and he's got the first down at the 35. Play had been whistled dead at the 35-yard line. So that little run will be futile for Larry Flowers. Watch him coming in motion now. He's going to Monk is going to work inside like that. He comes in here and then he does a reverse pivot move and slides right out there. Watch. Here he comes. Now he's going to work up on the defender, work to the inside, reverse pivot, go back outside. Very difficult to recover and cover. Does a nice job right there making the tackle but make the first down anyway. First and 10 Redskins. And uh, Riggins comes off, and Charlie Brown was in there for uh, a play or so, and then came back off the field. Well, Theismann didn't like something, so he had to call timeout, and he's not happy about having to waste that timeout. <laughs> 8.54 left to play in quarter number three. One of the newest of the Redskins, Jim Youngblood, former Los Angeles Ram. I saw him in the linebacker drills the other day on Friday, and he, he was moving real well for a, a veteran. You know, I was there when he came up as a rookie in about 1973, I think it was, somewhere around there. Signed with Seattle as a free agent this year, and they let him go, and the Redskins picked him up. First and 10, Washington from the 35. Joe Washington trying to get outside. Lawrence Taylor. Well, he does cover a little ground. Yes, he does. And that is really the strong side run defense of the New York Giant defensive team. When you have Carson to run at and D. Hardison to run at and Lawrence Taylor to run at, it's tough to make yards. Nebraska and UCLA, both of them uh, winners yesterday. Nebraska taking Minnesota. UCLA had a tough time but beat Long Beach State. That's a matchup, a rematch of a game from last year that uh, both clubs have been waiting for. You'll see it right here on CBS next Saturday afternoon. Second down, eight. Redskins from their 37. Giants showing blitz. Hand off Joe Washington. The darter. After the 45. Looks like he's about a yard short of the first down. Pete Shaw, number 44, making the stop. Joe Washington will just scare you to death. Eighth year in the National Football League. Fourth with the Redskins. As Theismann looks to the sideline uh, for the next play. That's the way the quarterbacks stack up so far. Have to give Theismann a, a slight edge percentage-wise. And he hasn't been taking the abuse that Sims has been taking either back there. Third and one for the Redskins at their 45. Riggins is back in there. Guess who's going to get the ball? Riggins for the first down and some change as he takes it over to the 50 down to the 49-yard line. First and 10 for the Redskins. John Riggins, the number five all-time leading rusher in the history of the National Football League, moving up on the 10,000-yard mark and has given no indication when he's going to call it quits. He has little scars all over his body, little two- and three-inch scars where something has been stitched up. And oh, man. There's, there's the all-time leading rusher. As you can see, Riggins is number five, and he's got a little ways to go to catch O.J. Simpson, who was in the number four position. First and ten. Redskins have a drive going here. Joe Washington wants to throw it. Downfield for C. That'll be overthrown at the five-yard line. It's a good thing he got rid of it because LT, Lawrence Taylor, number 56, was coming down his back. Terry Kennard back there defending. What was it that uh, Beasley Reese used to say about Lawrence Taylor? When he starts to blitz, uh, the bells and the whistles and the <laughs> sirens go off. <laughs> he is really something. He can cause you more problems in the preparation of an offensive game plan than any other defensive football player, at least that I ever coached against. And there's just so many things that he does 
that overpower you and the people that you assign to him. You have to be conscious at all times where he is. Second and ten. Redskins from the Giant 48. Again, the Giants showing blitz. Theismann, one-on-one -on -one coverage, far downfield. Pass is incomplete, intended for C. And Perry Williams, number 23, the cornerback, covering. Now, watch the tight coverage right here by this first-year player, Perry Williams, number 23. He has great speed, and he is also taller than Virgil C., number 80, running up up the outside. And that is an advantage to the defender. Nicely done by the young defensive back. Well, Perry good was size, 6'2", 195, North Carolina State. He didn't play last year, Frank, because of a stress, stress fractured foot. Easy for you to say. Cut on the shoes of uh, Terry Jackson. Since traded, third down and ten. Redskins. Again, pressure on Theismann, who unloads, and it's intercepted by Byron Hunt. 35, 40, 45, and up to the 47-yard line. The former SMU linebacker comes up with a big defensive play. They applied the pressure that time, and Theismann had to kind of hurry that toss. I'm not sure where the pressure came from, but it looked to me to be Andy Head, number 54, a linebacker. Head got inside there and gave him a shot. Coming right up the middle here right now. Here it comes. Now watch. Right. Boom. He gave him a good one. I know it. My gosh, it's 56, is it not? Lawrence Tater. I could not see from this angle. Nice interception by Byron Hunt. He gets going. He's going to have his motor running good this week. You knew Taylor had to be in the neighborhood somewhere. First and ten. Giants at their 47-yard line. Carpenter. Found nothing on the left side. Danced back to the middle and got two or three yards to the 48-yard line. Joe Theismann. Player of the year. The MVP in the National Football League last year. Really being tested, as are the Redskins, with a slow start this year. You go 0-3, you normally don't make it to the playoffs. Not very often. Like we said, you know, if you're 0-2, it's bad enough. Only 23 teams have been 0-2 in the last few years, Frank, and only five of them went on to win. Second down, six. Giants at the Redskin 48. Again, Carpenter about the line of scrimmage. In 1981, the Jets started off 0-3, and they uh, did make the playoffs. They finished uh, something like 11-5, but it just does not happen very often. Not very often. And the Redskins got a toughie next week in New England against the Patriots. who got a big come-from-behind win today and maybe unveil their quarterback of the future in Tony Eason as they beat Seattle. Third down, six. Sims pointing out something. Triple wing formation to the right side. And Sims out to Galbraith makes a one-handed catch. And that's a first down at the 41-yard line. Great what a play by the job. veteran Galbraith. Beautiful job. He had good pressure coming on him. Now watch the quarterback takes a snap from the shotgun. One of the advantages. See the rush is not around him. He slides to his left, lays it out there nicely. Galbraith reaches out there in a super move with his right hand and draws it to his body. Redskins trying to get their offense in shape for their next series of downs. They're talking about the defensive alignment that Taylor gave pressure on a few plays back that caused the interception. First and ten. Giants at the Redskins 41. Redskins faking the blitz. Carpenter up the middle. Ernest Gray, who we told you earlier, would probably at a wide receiver position, number 83. That's the advantage of having the x-ray machine right here in the stadium. And you know, there were a few years ago when that wasn't true at all stadiums. The, the Redskins are playing with a patched up defensive line right now. Their second string defensive left hand, Tony McGee is playing a left hand. And Charlie Mann, who started left hand, is over on the right side. Dexter Manley, who created a lot of problems for the Giants in the first half, out of the game with a leg injury. Second down, four. Carpenter lost the ball. Redskins recover. Looked like Daryl Grant, 77. So the turnovers are even at two apiece as Daryl Grant comes up with a big fumble recovery. 
There's counter action in the backfield. Now see that? Now he fakes the reverse right here. Now watch him fake the reverse. And that started to freeze people. Now watch the ball in his hand. He cuts back up inside. It was knocked out by a defender, and he could not see him coming. Grant noses his way underneath there and muscles the ball out. He's got it. Turnover is even now at two apiece, and the Redskins have a first down at their 34. Heisman to Riggins. To the 39-yard line, as you see the time remaining in the third period of play here at RFK Stadium. Just over three minutes, and the Giants leading the Redskins 14 to 13. And the Redskins have had nothing but problems on their last three possessions. Contrary to how they were moving the ball in the first half with those long, many play drives, Frank, you know, and just eating up the clock. You have to give the credit, really, to the Giants' defense. They're stopping it from doing that. Second down five from the 39. Riggins, first down and more to the 48-yard line. Barry Kennard, number 43, finally slowed him, but not without help. 74 yards now for Riggins in 22 carries. Nothing very sampy. Uh, <laughs> sampy. Easy for Nothing, you to say. Yeah, easy for you to say. Nothing very complicated about that play. He just rolled in there and then took a nice cut back similar to what Carpenter was doing to the Redskins earlier. First and ten. Redskins ball at the 47-yard line and they're end of the field. Riggins has been working so far, but this time he bounces off a tackle at the line of scrimmage, and D. Hardison, number 79, the right end defensively, a seventh-year man from North Carolina, comes in to make the stop. I said the turnovers were even to two apiece. Redskins have actually turned it over one more time. They have three. That's totally against their personality as a football team. D. Hardison, you know, you know what Bill Parcells calls him the fox? So he calls him the fox because he, if he was ever going to be in a war, he'd want him in his foxhole. He's a real competitor. Second down, eight. Monk to the right side, C off to the left in motion. Art Monk's got his man beat and Theisman overthrew him. Monk had Haynes beat that time and Theisman overthrew him. That happens. It also that the defensive back, I think, jammed him and just slowed that route down enough to maybe that was the reason the ball was overthrown. Not so much the ball was thrown too hard. It's amazing. Did you hear the fans boo that? Yes. Huh? Doesn't take long. The NFL doesn't. Player of the Year, and they give him a shot. You're only good until last Sunday, right? <laughs> and your last pass. Third down. Redskins still need eight for the first down with the ball just into Redskins territory at the 50-yard line. Wide right, C is split left. Looks like Charlie Brown is in there. Sore ankle and all. Theisman running out of trouble. Has the first down at the 41-yard line. Great scrambling ability. Leonard Marshall, number 70, finally made the stop. Now they're cheering him. Watch the offensive right tackle, mate. He's having problems up there, as you'll see right now. See George Martin, 75. He flushed him a little bit, getting off off the ground. Now he's running. Leonard Marshall, number 70, comes in. Terry Kennard, 43, finishes him off. But uh, Frank, Mark May's having a little problem out there, pass protecting at the right tackle spot. It could be critical here. First and 10. The Redskins have reached the giant 41-yard line. We're down to 40 seconds. Left to play in the third quarter. Theisman has the pass tipped out of the reach of Virgil C. on the far sideline. For an NFL Today report, right now let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Frank Vince Ferragamo out with that broken bone in his right hand, so Jeff Kemp is now the quarterback. Flushed from the pocket by the Pittsburgh Steelers, gets over to the right. He's got Hill downfield, and on the run, he's got it. And Drew Hill goes in, a 57-yard touchdown for the Rams. They trail the Steelers by three. Let's go back to Frank and Dick. Boy, Ferragamo with a <laughs> broken, broken hand. hand. That's all the Rams need. Second and 10. Our score here, 14 to 13. The Giants lead it, but the Redskins are moving. Theismann for Monk. Penalty 
marker is down. It's going to be pass interference, I believe, against the Giants, which would make it an automatic first down at the five. But let's see. The Giants uh, obviously would like to see it go the other way. Offensive pass interference. And we'll let Gene Barth, the referee, sort it out. The Giants were playing without a free safety. 36 defense. Here it is, you can see now Mark Haynes, number 36. He's gonna try to take him in there. Now watch, he's got him all by himself with no help inside. I don't know why he was lined up outside. That made it tough. I really didn't see pass interference on that shot. Did you, Frank? Well, the official saw it, and that's what counts. Well, he caught the ball, did he? Caught the ball anyway, didn't he? First, at the nine yard line. He did catch the football, it's a 32 yard penalty. I wonder why he was lined up outside with no free safety help inside. Riggins looking for some running room to about the seven. Curtis McGriff, number 76, wraps him up. One fellow we haven't seen is uh, Carl Banks, the number one draft pick of the uh, Giants, who's been very slow to uh, come along. Let's take another look at that. Now, you can see Monk is going to reach up for that football. Mark Haynes is working right in behind him, reaches up with his left hand. I really can't see the, the ball is being bobbled. The ball was not a complete pass. The ball was not a complete pass. The ball hit the turf. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Giants 14, the Redskins 13. We now pause for a word from your local RFK Stadium in Washington. Final period of play. The Washington Redskins trail by one. They have a second and goal from the Giants six yard line. Riggins is out. Joe Washington is in. Theisman is throwing for C. Tried to make the one-handed catch and couldn't control it. Virgil C., the intended receiver, and Kenny Hill was back there defending. Fine effort, fine effort. See, now there's where you'd like to have the six foot four receiver going for that one. It'll be third and six. Riggins, of course, is on the sidelines because obviously the Redskins think it's a passing situation. No question. The Virgil C.'s, Frank, are the kind of guys that are the movement guys. They break away from people a lot, but they're tough to get the fade patterns to in the end zone goal from the six. Redskins need a field goal to take the lead. Theisman unloads to Don Warren, the tight end at the four-yard line. And that'll set up a fourth and four. Look at Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown, 87, making his first catch. No, no not as He just went in there as a decoy, I think, Frank. Mosley has beaten the Giants five times since 1978 with field goals in the last second or in overtime. He has murdered the Giants in the past. That's a chip shot. 21 yards to take the lead. He's got it. minutes 11 seconds left to play of the game and the Redskins have recaptured the lead it is Jeff Hayes prepares to kick off 62 yard touchdown drive that time or rather a field goal drive with Mosley going the last 21 with the field goal McConkey is deep line drive kick McConkey at the five 15 20 25 near the 30-yard line. Anthony Jones, number 82, in the thick of things. Coming up Saturday, September 29th on CBS, the return of Jerry Cooney to the ring after two years. That fight against Larry Holmes, you'll go against Philip Brown in a 10-round heavyweight bout. You'll see it at 3.30 Eastern time. You think he's still got it? I don't know. You know, I was at a golf tournament here a year or so ago, and he, he was really fired up about getting back after it, but that was a year or so ago. <laughs> now he's had several fights scheduled and has had injury problems. First and 10. Giants from the 30. Try to come from behind here. Intercepted Vernon Dean. Dean at the 30. 25, 20, 55. Touchdown. D. 
Lane, who lost his starting job to Anthony Washington and got it back today. And he may have it for a while after that big play. Six yards on the interception return. Mosley tacks on the extra point. And the Redskins suddenly have some breathing room with 13 minutes and 49 seconds left to play. Here we come from the end zone. He pedals straight back. Now he turns to his right. He now lays it out there, and he dissects the ball coming underneath. Vernon Dean, number 32, makes a nice move right there. Now he's getting excited. He's picking up a block from Kaufman. Lead block there by Daryl Green, 28, and Belcher, number 73, just can't get over there quick enough. Looked like he was going over a hurdle there as he headed into the end zone from about the two-yard line. Timeout with the Redskins leading the Giants, 23 to 14. Jeff Hayes is ready to kick off at RFK Stadium is Bedlam. That was Dean's second interception of the day. McConkie fielding this one five yards deep, downs it in the end zone, and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line with the touchback. You're going to see Vernon Dean right here at the right-hand corner of your screen. Now the receiver right here is going to come off and try to come underneath. As he does that, Dean comes underneath him, picks it off, picks up some blocks as he goes, and it's touchdown. Now watch this. Watch the receiver come off. I can't see his number right here. Now watch him come underneath. Little delay move. There he goes. Now watch Dean coming right underneath him. Takes it away from him. He picks up some blocks, and off he goes for the touchdown. Redskin fans chanting defense now. First and 10 for the Giants at the 20-yard line. Sims, undaunted, comes out throwing. Morris was out of bounds. Well, the pass is incomplete. How does Sims today? Uh, Dick is wearing one of those flak jackets that's become very popular. Took a shot in the ribs last week, and uh, things very noticeable there. There's uniform. It is, he didn't wear it in practice last week. I thought he got was in bounds. Evidently, his right heel was just outside the line. It looked to me from here in the press box that he cut that ball in bounds. Good one, thing I didn't see anything. One heel equals out of bounds. Yeah, yeah that's what Coach Madden said. That's what he said. The worst of that effect. Second and ten. Looked like a little misfire there in the backfield as uh, Sims and Morris got tangled up with the handoff. Morris finally got it, got just a yard or two. And the Redskins go to the nickel. Well, those offensive conferences that the Hogs have been holding on the sidelines here in the second half started to pay off. Well, you bet. Of course, it was the defense that destroyed right. that last one. But got to give them some credit. The Hogs are coming off the ball better right now. And you have to come off the ball against that defensive front of the New York Giants. Bill Parcells looking on. But regardless of what happens, I think you'd have to say the Giants are here. The Giants have arrived. They'll be competitive all year playing this kind of football and win many games in Sims is 10 out of 22 for 161 yards on third and nine over the middle. Let's see if it's ruled a completion. It's going to be ruled incomplete. A tremendous hit that time. Put on, uh, I believe it was Byron Williams, number 87, the intended receiver. However, we got a flag. And it's going to be defensive holding. That carries with it the automatic first down. Joe gives him a shot there from the sideline. Oh, Byron Williams really paid the price. Illegal use of the hand, 69 defense, first down. They call the penalty on Perry Brooks, the Redskins defensive tackle. So the Giants have a life. They pick up the first down. The penalty is only five yards, but the first is the big thing, and they get that at their 26. Could this have been a fumble? They called it incomplete if he, almost if immediately. He caught the ball and had it. Well, he got high. Evidently, low, from that angle, it looked like he didn't have the ball. It must have been in between those two people. Morris in motion on first and ten. Sims looking for Ernest Gray, and Gray doing a great job keeping the concentration. Had Vernon Dean riding all over his back. First down at the 45-yard line for the Giants. And they ain't dead yet. No, they're not. These guys are fighting. You know, Ernest Gray is the guy they hex-rayed the elbow on a little while ago. Here he is playing football. 
It's been a bad day for quarterbacks. We told you Vince Ferragamo had a broken hand. Now we get word that Joe Montana's got a rib problem in the San Francisco New Orleans game, and he's out of action. 23-14, Redskins leading. Intended for Manuel. Going up with him was Daryl Green. Number 28, Manuel is the rookie who caught the touchdown pass against Dallas last week. For an NFL Today report, here's Brent in New York. Frank, this is the touchdown that has the San Francisco 49ers ahead. Joe Montana out with a rib injury. Matt Cavanaugh hits Earl Cooper here. Cooper gets in, and now the 49ers, who once led New Orleans by 20 points, are back in command 24 to 20. Let's go back to Frank. That's a pretty wild football game. Second and 10. Giants at their 44-yard line trying to come back. Sims in trouble behind the line. We got a flag down. Thrown in the general direction of Bobby Johnson, but Sims at that point simply trying to unload. So let's see what this one is all about. Offensive holding. That was a second down play. Bill Parcells grew up in the New York area in New Jersey in his second year as head coach of the New York Giants. Holding, 67 offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Billy Ard. That moves it back to the 35-yard line. It'll be second down, 20. Other scores from around the National Football League. Second and 20 from the 34. Sims rolling pocket that time, almost picked off. Number 57 for the Washington Redskins, Rich Mallott, got his fingertips on that football. Sims, a lot different ball player. He's healthy this year, and you can tell by watching him in practice, his confidence level is really up. Yeah, and uh, he's excited about staying healthy, and of course, it was a long season, but let's not wish him any bad luck. But the other thing that I think has made the biggest change is the front line is better. Now, it hasn't really proved so much today against this kind of rush, but in the first two ball games, he's had better protection than they've had there in years. Third and 20. From the 35, Sims has him out of the shotgun. Airmail. Johnson! Oh, what a catch! Bobby Johnson at the 20. We got a flag, but I think that'll be pass interference. Hey, well, he reached out and grabbed him. Bobby Johnson paying another dividend to the New York Giants with a great extended catch all the way down at the 20-yard line of the Washington Redskins. Interference, 24 defense, penalty refused, first down. Anthony here Washington. Gets, here you go, coming on him. See Washington, number 24, taking away the inside, realizing there's no safety help. Now he's fading the ball over his outside shoulder. Watch him reach and dive. He knows he's beat, so he grabs him. <laughs> Beautiful catch by Bobby Johnson, number 88. That's a 45-yard gain for the Giants and a first down at the Redskins 20. Byron Williams in motion. Sims to throw it. Protection is good. Goes over the middle. Good defense. Fine knockdown by Tony Peters, number 23. For another NFL Today report, once again, here's Brent Musburger in New York. Frank, this may be the knockout punch for the Dallas Cowboys. Gary Hogaboom this time has thrown the touchdown pass to the side, and look at this. The flanker threw it, and Doug Donnelly is all alone. 49 yards, it's 23-10, the Cowboys lead the Eagles. Back to Frank. Bobby Johnson now with five catches for 109 yards for the Giants, who are on the move. They have the football at the Redskin 20-yard line. Second and 10. Carpenter. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. Malott, number 57, came through. Took his feet out from underneath him before he had a chance to get moving. 
Rich is that real stable kind of linebacker, typical Penn State guy. You know, there's a lot of those linebackers around the league. In fact, there's another one on this same team, and Larry Kubin playing back up middle linebacker. That'll set up third and ten. Giants need a first down to keep this one going. I don't know if the field goal is going to help them that much at this point, but keep in mind there's still 11 minutes left to play in this game. So a lot of things could happen. Sims over the middle, kept in the air, and almost into the hands of Bobby Johnson. Ernest Gray touched the ball, and Johnson was by himself in the end zone. He couldn't reach it. He couldn't reach it. He had some heat on him, too, and he probably couldn't hold the ball quite as long. See, now the rush coming up inside. You'll see Malat, 57, give him a shot, and right there, also good defense. Also good defense. They'll spot it at the 27-yard line. 37-yard field goal attempt. The holder, Jeff Rutledge. The kick is no good. Haji Sheik, who set an NFL record with 35 field goals last year, hooks that one. And the score remains at 23-14 here in Washington. The 134th consecutive capacity crowd here at RFK Stadium looking on as the Redskins take over first and 10 at the 20-yard line. After the missed field goal attempt, Riggins on the carry. And right now, I would imagine in Joe Gibbs' mind is a little ball control. There's a penalty marker down on this play. Redskins would like to do nothing more than run off a big chunk of the clock, but that won't help because the penalty is against the Redskins. Be a lot of pressure on the uh, Hogs, the big offensive line of the Redskins. Here's Gene Barth, the referee. Holding offense, number 73, still first down. Mark May. Mark May. Guilty of the holding call. This is the time, though, that they really like to call on those guys, the so-called the Hogs, and get off, get base blocking, knock people off the line of scrimmage, and, and ground out three and four or five yards of track and eat up the clock. This with your first and 20, it's going to take more than three, four, or five yards. Riggins. Out to the 15-yard line. That's five or six yards, and he had an escort on the way, Dick. Now you're going to see it's a little counter move right here. He's just going to make a little counter move. He come on back. Now watch. Counter move. Both linemen pull him. Nick Grimm, 68. Big Joe Jacoby, 300 pounds, 66. Here he comes back up inside. Riggins carrying a the ball. They're going to get him down for about a six-yard gain. Second down, 15. Redskin from their 15-yard line. Taylor is blitzing Joe Washington. Going the opposite direction, away from Lawrence Taylor. And Robbie Jones making the stop. And he'll set up third down. They're still going to need uh, close to 10 for the first down. Joe Washington last year. Average better than five yards per carry. Tops in the NFL and has gone to the uh, the goggles. That's what we have left in this football game. Time is the ally of the Washington Redskins right now as they lead it by nine. Giants have to score twice in order to pull this one out. Monk in motion. Theismann flushed out of the pocket. Find some time trying to pick up the first and is caught from behind, short of the first down marker. And the man who caught him getting up very slowly, Jim Burt, the nose tackle. He gets the pressure inside. He wants to go downfield with the ball. So he needs, now the tight end's right out there in front of him. He gets the pressure from George Martin, 75. Now George is chasing him. Then he decides to run because the receivers are covered downfield and Burt, 64, comes up and trips him up from behind. I think he was ready to go into his slide even yeah. before Bird got there. I was sort of surprised he didn't set up behind the line of scrimmage knowing that he couldn't get the 10 and see if he couldn't throw it like he, you know, is really famous for. McConkey the deep man and Jeff Hayes to punt and the Giants playing return all the way. Watch out. Fair Woo! catch by <laughs> McConkey. And I would say a wise move. I didn't think he was going to fair catch that for a minute and I could see that 
number 51, Monty Coleman, bearing down on him. 46 on the punt. No return. Timeout. What's happened to the Giants on their last five possessions? First and 10. New York's ball from the 27-yard line. Carpenter handing off on the reverse. Fumble, loose football, and that could be six points for Curtis Jordan. Touchdown, Redskins. Another turnover. Converted into a touchdown on the Washington Redskins. Dean runs the interception in, and Curtis Jordan coming in for Mark Murphy today at the safety position. Runs in that fumble. The Giants tried to get fancy and it backfired. It did. It was too bad. I, you know, I checked over there to see Bill Parcells at the end of that play, and he had both hands on his knees. And I think this ain't. I can't believe it. Mosley connects on the extra points, and it's 30 to 14. Now watch the action start here. He's going to hand it off right here. Now it comes back. But see, Kaufman, 55, is barreled inside. He gets pursued inside out from Dave Butts. He turns it back in. It looks like he might break the line of scrimmage. Monty Coleman, 51, comes in. And then Butts came back and knocked the ball out. Here comes Curtis Jordan, picks it up. And Sims is no match right there. Curtis Jordan. Here's another one of those three agents scoring a touchdown. It was the Giants' rookie receiver, Lionel Manuel, who was the ball carrier, wound up with the ball carrier, well, with the ball, fumbled it. They're going to be happy at Rocco's Restaurant. Oh, Rocco's Restaurant is owned by Curtis Jordan and Jeff Hayes. They're in business together. They're going to be rocking tonight. Speaking of Jeff Hayes, he'll do the honors. McCunky, once again, the deep man. He came to camp last year with the Giants, took his furlough in the Navy and spent all the preseason. It was impressive. They gave him a shot this year, and he made the club at the age of 27. Bill McCunkey from the goal line out to the 10, 15, 20, and out of bounds somewhere near the 30-yard line. They really went out at the 26-yard line. Coming up tonight on CBS, premiere time for 60 Minutes. Brand new show for you. ER and Some Kind of Hero, which uh, stars Richard Pryor. So be watching immediately upon the conclusion of the football game. Seven minutes, 53 seconds, separates the Redskins from their first victory of the season and the Giants from the first loss of the year. A game that's actually closer than the score would indicate. There were the two big turnovers. It actually how the Giants beat the Cowboys a week ago, so you know, turnaround's fair play. Come back to haunt him this way. Sims. Charles Mann flushes him out of the pocket, gets it away, and Williams hangs on for the first down at the 44-yard line. Byron Williams, and Williams is hurt. Vernon Dean's playing with real confidence right now. He's had some big plays, and he's got the starting job back, and he really went up there and gave Byron Williams a real shot. He's taken a few today. First and 10 from the 44 after the 19-yard pickup. Sims again to Williams. Out of bounds, just short of the first down. The Sims is really going to have to loosen it up, and uh, it's got to be heaven for the Redskins' defensive line because they know they can tee off on him because he, he's got to throw it. He's rotating some fresh de defensive linemen back in there. Fresh rotation. They only have one guy to rotate in there. Perry Brooks just came in at the right tackle spot. Johnson to the left side. Williams to the right. Second and one. Giants at the Redskin 46. Sims again to Williams. 35, 30. He can move is really necktied at the 29-yard line. Williams is going to have fun trying to get out of bed tomorrow morning. The 
Again, a nice shot of the shotgun formation. He's back there. He's getting a little heat, but he has more time now with Dexter Manley not in there. He catches the ball coming across the middle. Now watch him take the ball with his left hand. Sometimes they do that for balance, but it doesn't make good sense. Monty Coleman comes in there and grabs him by the back, and down he goes. That's another giant first down at the 29 of Washington. Giants need three scores to pull this one out in the last seven minutes. Sims throws a bullet at the near sidelines. And getting the workout in this series certainly has been wide receiver Byron Williams. Here he is coming off real tight now. So he did a nice job of stopping right in between people. There he is, Carpenter coming in to get the tackle on him, but he had made a nice positive game. He went without a huddle that time, Frank. From the 20, Sims has it knocked out of his hands. That's a loose ball. And I believe the, the uh, Giants got it back at the 25-yard line. Sims never got the arm up. Charles Mann that time applying the pressure, number 71. He has played well the entire ball game, starting at the defensive end, left-hand spot, now playing the right-hand spot in place of Dexter Manley. Now they're in a two-minute drill here with seven minutes left to go in the game. Second down, 15. Sims to Tony Galbraith, 20, 15, down to the 10. Galbraith at the five, first down. Tony Galbraith spent most of his career with the Saints, went to the Vikings, and was obtained by the Giants in the offseason trade for Brad Van Pelt, who has yet to report to Minnesota, and if he doesn't, the Giants are going to owe the Vikings a draft choice at the end of the year. Van Pelt was in the Giants stadium area on Wednesday of last week. I guess he's just really doesn't want to report. Doesn't make sense <laughs> to me. Some confusion in the Giants defense here over how many players they have on the field and they're going to call time out Redskins are called time because they have players rushing on and off Bill saying my gosh guys now he's hooked up to uh, Ron Earhart the, offensive, right, the coordinator. offensive coordinator upstairs I think both phones are set up so they go ahead and pass through his headset offense speaks when they have the ball defense speaks when they have the ball who Gibbs be talking to He's talking to a special teams coach right there. He's a fine coach. Their special teams have done a super job. Wayne Seaver is their special teams coach. Here he's talking to Pat Hodgson, the wide receiver coach. Coming up next Sunday on CBS, Dick and I will be in New England at Foxborough. The Patriots, who had a big win today over Seattle, they'll take on the Redskins. And San Francisco against Philadelphia. Second game of the doubleheader, you will see either Tampa Bay face the New York Giants, who will be back home in the Meadowlands, or the Green Bay Packers against the Dallas Cowboys from Texas Stadium. So the Giants and Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay's uh, had its problems, and the Giants figured if they could come up with a victory here, they'd really be in great shape next week. But even so, they go in with, uh, I think, a lot of confidence off this ball game, take away a couple of turnovers, it's an even game. They've done a good job. Of course, they're not satisfied now because they've had a history of having problems in that fourth quarter. And sometimes that's just, a, sometimes you have guys around you that almost expect some negative things to happen. Though I think most of those guys are out of the lineup. Ernest Gray is wide to the left. Johnson is split to the right from the shotgun. First and goal from the five. The intended receiver was Zeke Moak, number 84. I believe that's the first pass they've thrown in his direction today. They have the Washington Redskins play a lot of inside combination coverages on the tight end, and it makes it tough sometimes to get him the ball. And that's maybe why we haven't seen him catching balls today. It'll be second and goal for the Giants at the Redskins five-yard line. They trail by a score of 30 to 14. They had the lead momentarily at 14 to 13. And the Redskins defense came up with the big turnovers, the much maligned Redskins defense. It's been taking so much heat the last couple of weeks. Second and goal. Sims with time to throw, overthrows everybody. He well, had two wide receivers. He had Gray and uh, Manuel who are right, right together in the back in the uh, end zone. I kind of believe he threw that over the top on, person, uh, on purpose. They were just, you know, no one really obviously open. It was all tight, different color jerseys there. I think he just put it over the top to prevent the sack and the interception. 
Sims was the Giants' first draft pick after uh, George Young arrived on the scene. And, of course, it's taken him several years to really get the dividends to pay off. He's had an uncanny run of bad luck with injuries. Shoulder, knee, thumb. He had a very impressive rookie year, though, really. He was, you know, I thought he was going to be great when he just too many injuries. Third and goal to go from the five. Sims, corner of the end zone. Intended for Manuel, number 86. Really nice job by Vernon Dean, but that Manuel is really quick. Did you see that little move that he used? I don't think there's a decision to be made here, is there? No, you're going to go for six points. Forget the field goal. You're down 30 to 14 with five minutes and 33 seconds left to play. Marcel says we got to have a touchdown. Sometimes a shotgun formation down there yeah, is a little tough to run because it, sometimes you get that ball off so quick in the shotgun, sometimes you can't get it off that quick. Fourth down, goal to goal from the five-yard line of the Redskins. Sims, they have to run it in. And it stopped short of the goal line. Redskins will take over at the one. Looked like he had a shot at it, and his feet kind of went out from underneath him as he tried to cut back. Well, the one thing you know for sure, Frank, he is not going to challenge the defenders. He's been hurt too many times doing that. Here he is in the shotgun, gets the snap back there. He pedals straight back, looking to his left. Decides he has to run as the rush is moved to the inside. Here comes Daryl Green, 77 on him. Derek Green, 80. No, Rich Malott, number 57. He didn't want any part of that physical contact. Smart move on his part. Officials have spotted at the two-yard line, and the Redskins will move it out from there with five minutes and 24 seconds left to play in the game. Riggins lined up in the backfield behind Theismann. Again on that play. Lawrence Taylor, number 56, and on the stop. He's a man amongst men out there. It's almost criminal for a guy to be that size and, and, and have all and that ability. And run a 4-5-40. That's as fast as most of those wide receivers. Or faster. And he's like 6-4-2-40. Second and 10. Riggins. The Redskins trying to knock off some minutes on that clock now, which shows four and a half minutes. I think Riggins has become the all-time ball carrier, has he not? Yes, he needed 21 carries, and he has 27, and he surpasses the old record for career carries. That's a Redskin record held by Larry Brown. Pretty good running back. Larry Brown had 1,530 carries. That's a lot of carries. Now we just saw the guy carry it a few more times. Third down, seven. Redskins are at their five-yard line. They'll stay on the ground. And Hayes will be punting from out of the end zone. Reminder, 60 minutes coming up immediately following the conclusion of the football game. We have three minutes and 52 seconds left to play in this contest. It will be a brand new premier edition of 60 Minutes. So Riggins, uh, with a workhorse afternoon, 28 carries for 87 yards, gets a breather. Oh, Rig, you know, I take the NRA magazine being a member, and he is now the spokesperson for the last few issues in there talking about, you know, proper gun care and control and all these kind of things. One fellow that the uh, Redskins are missing this afternoon is Mark Murphy, their fine safety. He was uh, really their defensive uh, quarterback. I was amazed Jake, Joe Gibbs told us how much of the defense he calls. He says about half of the uh, defensive signals are audibles. It's their philosophy to allow the to want the offense to line up, then have their safety. Mark Murphy, the man you see on the screen, will make all the calls that adjust the defense to the formation they're going to defend. It is very tough to do. you got to miss a guy like that, but of course Jordan did come up with one of the big plays filling in for him. Hayes standing about uh, as far as you could at the back of that end zone. Gets the kick away under pressure. Beautiful punt. McConkey at the 45-50. 
penalty markers down as McCocky is dropped at the 49-yard line. Yankees all over the place. Anthony Jones, who has been the penalty on the specialty teams, makes a stop. Frank, I think the penalty's on Brian Hunt, number 57, and he felt bad about it, too, because I actually saw him apologize to the Redskin coverage man, Mel Kaufman. That's who it is, Byron Hunt. Now, did you coach your players to apologize to a guy? When well, <laughs> not really, but, you know, the kid has some class, and he felt bad because that was more than just a little push in the back. I mean, he gave him a shot. 51 yards on the punt, seven on the return, and Sims back to the attack. Sims has hit the 300-yard mark in the passing. 17 completions and 36 tries. He has had two picked off his first two interceptions of the year. Joe Gibbs says they like to contest every pass thrown, and that was demonstrated today. They will gamble, and they will get burned occasionally. Giants have been in the shotgun the last few minutes. Galbraith over the middle, 45 to the 50, dancing his way down to the 48-yard line, and should have enough for the first down. Green, number 28, coming up from the secondary to make the stop. And the Giants, who have been in this two-minute offense since about the six-minute mark after Jordan picked up the fumble and ran it into the end zone. Continue to go without a huddle. They like that play, obviously. Galbraith again over the middle. But I think the Redskins will give it to him all day. Five yards a pop. Well, this is one of the few times you're going to get the Redskins in a lot of zone defenses back to back. They're going to play zone, come back into the zone, and you can run those little delay crossing patterns against zone coverages. Second and one. Giants have two timeouts left, and the Redskins have one. Sims, another open receiver, and this time it's Johnson over on the far side. Mel Kaufman, number 55, wraps him up, and Sims quickly gets his group back to the line of scrimmage. First down at the 32-yard line of the Washington Redskins. Down to the 24-yard line to Byron Williams, number 87, played his college football at the University of Texas at Arlington, which is between Dallas and Fort Worth became a real fine last year. He was cut loose by the Green Bay Packers, and the Giants picked him up. Clock running toward the two-minute warning. Sims looking deep, but instead goes over the middle, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Zeke Moat. You can see that contact coming. That guy was out there playing loose zone, and he just collapsed outside in and gave him a shot. It was Tony Peters, uh, number 23. Peters, a young man who was suspended for a year, worked very hard, had the suspension lifted, still a little bit rusty at that safety position, but a, a great football player a couple of years ago. You know, he was one of 11 children. A lot of large families playing on defense. <laughs> Sims that way, that's right. Every week we notice that. Sims has now put it in the air 41 times. Third down, Giants need two for the first down. We'll get the two-minute warning after this play over the middle to Galbraith to the 20 to the 15 and down to the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal to goal for the Giants as we hit the two-minute warning mark actually with one minute and 54 seconds left to play in the game of the Redskins with a comfortable 16-point lead. Played, played well. First down, 15. Giants going for the consolation touch here and it's intercepted and Vernon Dean gets his third. Dean is back to the 10 to the 15 across the 20-yard line. How about Vernon Dean? Lost his starting job, got it back today, and comes up with a three-interception game. Never throw the ball late down the middle. Here he goes. He's just sitting back there. He's got good time now. He steps up inside the pocket, and Dean just comes across from the outside, picks it off. Now he becomes a running back. Pretty good high school football player out of Los Angeles, California. Went to junior college, then on to San Diego State. Had a nice visit with him yesterday, sitting there in the locker room talking. He said, Coach, when I get this opportunity, I'm going to take advantage of it. Final score, the 49ers are 3-0. And, oh, and the Saints 0-3, 30 to 20, the final score in that game. And San Francisco will take on Philadelphia in a game that uh, many of you will see in the first half of our CBS doubleheader. 
Redskins giving it to Riggins now to try to run out the clock. Keep in mind, 60 minutes upcoming right after the conclusion of the ball game, and this will go quickly now with the Giants trailing 30 to 14, and we're down to our last one minute and 15 seconds and counting. Second down six, not much use really for the uh, Giants to use their last two timeouts. And Bill Parcells letting the clock run down. Riggins tripped up at the line of scrimmage, got maybe a yard or so. Well, a disappointed Bill Sims will finish the day 22 out of 43. 47 yards, but the three interceptions obviously hurt the Giants. One return for a touchdown by Dean. Now the Giants are going to call a timeout with 41 seconds to go. And then, of course, Curtis Jordan running in that fumble recovery for a score. That's making it too easy on the other team. So Parcells uh, didn't figure they'd go 16 and 0. Now, he's a realist. He said we were a little bit lucky in winning those. We're a better football team. If we can continue to prove, we're going to give people problems. And he said, hey, if we could win this one Sunday, he was talking to me on Thursday. He said, if we could win that one Thursday, we might be real tough earlier than we anticipate. But the young offensive linemen showed today that they do need some help. They do need some more experience. But uh, they're going to be fine tackles. And Joe Gibbs got to feel like he's at the world off his shoulders. Some of the reasons for losing have been written on. Coming up next week on CBS, another doubleheader. You'll see, as far as the first game goes, either San Francisco, Philadelphia, or Washington against New England. doing a little finger pointing. Washington leading the Giants with 32 seconds left to play. And the Giants have just called their final timeout. We welcome those of you who've been watching the Detroit-Tampa Bay ball game. You had yourself an exciting game with uh, Tampa winning its first of the year and beating the Lions by a score of 21 to 17. And those same Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be at the Meadowlands next Sunday afternoon to face the Giants. Fourth down. Redskins simply running out the clock here in this football game, which is 30 to 14. Hayes putt fielded by McConkey with the fair catch with 24 seconds to go. Turnovers have been the big item in the second half for those of you who joined us late with the Redskins. Uh, Vernon Dean running in a Sims interception for a touchdown and Curtis Jordan scoring with a 29-yard fumble return for a score. 45 yards on the punt. 24 seconds, all that's left. And the Giants will be 2-1. And, and the Redskins will be 1-2. And, and hopefully they feel uh, on their way back at the playoff track. First and 10. They've been. Sims out of bounds. Thrown it up for grabs. Intercepted but out of bounds by the Washington Redskins' Tony Peters. Number 23. feeling for Sims at this point. Just want to get it over with and get off the field and start working on next week. It does give them an opportunity right here. They know they can't win with the touchdown, but in working the three receivers out there and going for the Big Ben play, they, they, you, know, you don't get that kind of practice in here. Today. We told you about the first half of the NFL doubleheader on CBS next week. The second half, you'll see either Tampa Bay against the Giants or the Packers take on the Cowboys, depending on where you happen to be. Cowboys leading Philadelphia late in their game. Sims in trouble behind the line and ripped down by number 51, Monty Coleman. should just about do it. Coming up, 60 minutes immediately upon the conclusion of the football game. And we've got 13 seconds left to go. That'll be for 
all of you except on the West Coast, where you'll see it at your regularly scheduled time. Giants get one last playoff as time runs out. And Sims airs it out. Handed for Byron Williams. And again, Peter's over there, but out of bounds. So that's the end of the football game. And the Washington Redskins have taken a large step on the road back. They win it 30 to 14.